Hello, ladles and jelly Hi, spoons. Welcome to EFAP Mini Super Chat Catch-Up for episode 258, delving into the depressing abyss of Boogie 298 um, with a whole bunch of guests. What an episode. What a crazy event. Wow. I've heard the, the guy who directed it, uh, Mike Clum, he's doing one for DSP. Um, ah. Interesting. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, it's one where he'll be able to go see him in person. I think they're going to try and strike some kind of deal. I don't know. I don't know what the newest news on that is, but good luck. You saw Boogie in person, right? Yes, but Boogie, I feel, is much more willing to do Boogie something like that. Boogie is way more willing to do that. DSP, not so much. Yeah. I can see DSP being like, ah, no. Unless you promise to like make him look good or something, but I don't know. See. <laughs> be a funny one. Because uh, that is the eldest of the lol cows, as far as I know, anyway. Not like uh, actual age, but well, longest running. He was around because oh, he yeah, was yeah. he was a lol cow kind of from the beginning, whereas Wings it took a little while, and obviously Boogie it took a lot longer. Well, and a lot of these cows yeah, either Boogie's stopped or paused, um, but DSP has just been consistently going for like ages. Well, yeah, because that's that's kind of the nature of the the boogie story is the dramatic fall from grace, whereas DSP was never in uh, in yeah. anybody's good graces, really. A little bit, like, uh, and it was all like inaccurate, almost. You know, like, oh look, this guy's great at doing let's plays and stuff, and it's like, no, he's not. There's just no one else around. Well, how did Uh Well, yeah, because I mean, that was of the era of put your. Uh, he started back in the era before it was just accepted that you need to capture directly from the source. He would, like, put his camera on a stack of, like, DVDs <laughs> and, then, and then record the screen. Yeah. And wasn't he, like, really resistant to changing for a while? Because that was just the way he does it. Like, that was his thinking. Well, this is how I do it, so I'm going to keep doing it this way, even though there's an obvious better alternative. What a character. And we're going to find out what everyone had to say about that episode today. What messages they sent in, <laughs> and uh, I guess what we have to say in response to it. So, I guess we'll get started, right? Yeah, why not? We'll read the first one, which is Hi Rags. Hello. Brilliant. The second one is Rolls Upon Rolls Upon Rolls. Rolls on Rolls on Rolls. Which makes some sense, I think. Yeah, uh, he's a rolly kind of guy. Not to imply like the existence of physical exercise or, 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 or tumbling, but like he, he's he's a rolly man. Hmm. Uh, thoughts on the latest TikTok influencer Osama bin Laden? This is the reference to oh, how wow. he his letter was being read by TikTok influencers or whatever, right? They were like, "Wow, Osama wasn't that bad or whatever." He was fucking nuts. I think that's died down though. TikTok is um, he has waves of. Trends, and I, I, I believe that one's already stopped, so... Who knows what's next for the world? Um, do, do. Step aside, Oppenheimer. This is the real gourmet shit. That's actually true. <laughs> the idea of, what, so Boogieheimer, <clears throat> that's the double feature. You yeah. go see Oppenheimer, and then you go see the dark, sad life of Boogie2998. Is that a thinly veiled fat man joke? Thinly veiled? Wait, which part? Anything I said, or because I there, there was no thinly veiled. I was just there was no. I wasn't trying to meme. I was just making an observation. No, no, the the Oppenheimer. What of calling Boogieheimer? No, no, the the World War Two designation given to the atomic bomb. Oh um, right, Fat Boy. Wait, was it? Fat wait, 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 Fat Man and Little Boy. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> The idea Boogie, that Boogie, Boogie is not a little out boy. of the plane. He is, he is, <laughs> <laughs> in the sheer kinetic force, eradicates the city. I mean, damage will be done. There's, there's no denying it. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, Massives, can't catch this one live, unfortunately. Boogie is a fascinating creature. Can you guys do your best impression of Hassan struggling to use a toaster? Like, play... How do we do that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, we can't, I guess all you could do is the voice of, of the frustration of it not working, but we can't exactly, we can't, like, well, pantomime it or anything. I think Hassan is smart enough to use a toaster. Hmm. Because um, it's, because, yeah. well, like, like, can a, a crow, can a crow do it? Um, I, I would assume that if a crow can do it, Hassan could probably do it. 
you can teach a crow to do a lot of a lot of cool things. So maybe... yeah, I wouldn't underestimate oh, a crow by comparing him to Hassan. I mean, you know. yeah, that's what I'm saying. If a crow can do it, then I think Hassan's got a sporting chance. Because remember, crows <laughs> like they are they work together in a, a really coordinated way. You know, they look out for each other and uh, they communicate messages as part of their uh, their big group. It murder, right? That's the name of a, a crow group. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're like they're very cooperative, kind of like a bit worker co-op-y, I suppose. They all own the means of their production wow. of uh of um of I guess getting like worms and stuff, like getting worms and seeds and things and and whatever whatever other things crows eat. Oh, I thought you were going somewhere else with that, something where Hassan like cheered on to the deaths of people that he might not have liked or something. But. I don't know if crows no, I was just that. thinking about crows. I, I was just thinking about crows and, and how they're interesting little birds. Yeah, crows are great. I like, mm. I like how those sorts of birds kind of hop around and strut, you know, the way that uh, the, like crows and ravens and uh, magpies kind of kind of saunter around the place. I think if there were an impression of him using a toaster, it might involve, like, he puts the bread in and you know, engages the mechanism but hasn't actually powered it but doesn't realize and so when it doesn't do anything you would call it a liar. I could see that <laughs> happening. Well, there is a liar bird. There you go then. The, it all matches. Um, also play Little Nightmares High Rags. Hello there. Maybe someday. Maybe um, if it was called Long Nightmares. Yeah. I had to do a triple take reading this title. Holy shit, why? And is Chris Chan next on the list? Probably not, but the why is just because we have some unique backstory for, uh, you know, knowledge for Bookie. And the documentary was something yeah. special. Um, I mean, yeah, it's the biggest deal in Boogie's career since, um, well, I guess since, uh, him getting arrested. Yeah. And who knows? It's only, uh, I mean, it's... <laughs> There's plenty it, of years it, left, it, in theory. Rise to fame, left, right? Yeah. Who knows what'll happen next? This is the beginning of a new era for Boogie that will, I'm sure, yield great results for him. Uh, Boogie 2, Depressing Boogaloo. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I find it more fascinating than depressing, uh, if I'm being honest. Oh yeah, it's not me. I, I can just, like, laugh at him, right? He's the one who has to live with himself. It's it's a fascinating tale, um, and it's and I think the big thing is that uh, I don't know, it, like the idea of it being a fall from grace. I suppose <laughs> that's accurate, but I think the only thing that's happened is it's just oh, like he was always, I don't know, he was always not great. Is uh, essentially what you are. I think the realization is not that something changed, or that something changed. I guess in in the in the the forward face that he kind of put on. That there was a persona that he cultivated of like the jolly fat internet guy, but then in reality he was uh, just like this incredibly narcissistic, selfish, self-serving individual. Uh, there are parts of the documentary that are depressing for me. I think it's, it's certain aspects, Which, uh, certain moments. What's the most depressing part? The um probably the double apron was something of a like horror, and then uh... yeah, like that's your body, <laughs> you know, that's your that's you. Like, this, probably not good to have a single big tongue than having two bonus ones underneath. So, yeah. Know, something's wrong, you know? Pretty scary. I guess it's like a horrifying insight into what the human body can become. Very adaptable yeah. to ensure it survives along with your decisions, <laughs> whatever they may be. Well, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just, you don't see a lot of obese animals, do you, you know? Not many. Um... Usually the opposite, right? Whenever you see an animal that's uh, really struggling, it's a, it's a, a, a starving, you know, like those pictures of the polar bears that haven't eaten anything. It's like, oh, geez. But you don't ever see it the opposite way around of like what happens when the polar bear just has an abundance of food and just turns well, into a chongus. I'll actually say that um, one of the, the leading killer of dogs is complications from obesity. Oh, uh, I can believe that. People sure. overfeed the fuck out of their dogs. And don't walk uh, them enough. Yeah, to the point where cute. if you see you see a normal-sized dog, a dog as it should look, and a lot of people think that it's emaciated. 
So, because people have such a tendency to over to overfeed their dogs and not exercise them that they just clump clump clump. That's interesting. Well, because yeah. it's it's you know it depends on the dog. Some dogs can be chill and don't want to walk as much, but then there are other dog breeds like Labradors, Kelpies, um, Huskies, and and German Shepherd and stuff that need a lot of activity. Which is interesting, considering that you don't. I don't think you see nearly as many fat cats as fat dogs. No. Um, I think people, either people have a tendency to not overfeed their cats, or I think cats, due to their passive nature, are not constantly, like, pestering or begging for mm. food. Or I think um, it might be that lives. cats lead more self-directed lives than dogs, in a sense. Um, a cat's just going to do what a cat does, and a, a person can't really... I don't know, it's harder to coax them into any given lifestyle compared to a dog. Um, and maybe it is exactly what you said as well, right? The idea that a dog's always going to kind of let you know what's going on, and a cat's more like, eh, you know. Yeah, whatever. You know, happens. I'm just minding my own business here. And cats can uh, get themselves fed to an extent as well. I think better than dogs, right? Because dogs will eat a lot of things uh, that can even kill them, but cats are like hunters, or at least... Oh, uh, well, yeah, cats are... Uh... Uh, look, I cats love cats, are... but uh, cats are incredibly destructive to our local ecosystems because they will just go out and hunt shit. Um, cats are like hyper carnivores and uh, it happens incredibly in effective and predators. They sleep and lounge around so much. Um, so I don't know, maybe maybe these critters, it's just about like metabolism and stuff like that because you've never, well, you never wait, see fat cats... lions, you know. A cat's corpuscular. Um, they very well might be, but that depends on one very important thing, Fringy. What's that? Which is the meaning of that word. Oh, corpuscular means, uh, that most active during, uh, dusk and, uh, and dawn. I do not know. I, I believe that, that uh, I believe a lot of cats of... are corpuscular, uh, but I don't know if, dom like, that domesticated cats are. Because, like... I, kn I know it because it's from Archer, because Archer has a friend, Ocelot, called Babu, and um, he's described as being crepuscular, uh, which I believe that Ocelots are, but uh, obviously not all cats are the same. Um, I, I'm pretty sure- I, I don't, man, now I actually don't know. I feel like they have a very- like they, they lounge around a lot, but I feel like at night they're definitely active. Yeah, which is what's making me wonder now, because cats are not nocturnal. But they're not... Damn. I, I mean, I, I this could probably be solved with a quick Google search, but... <laughs> I've, I've never really thought about it. Whereas, obviously, dogs are, you know, they're, they're daytime. Dineural is what uh, I believe it's called when you're, you're awake during the day. Yeah, dogs have a tendency to sort of match the sleeping schedules of their owners. Uh, so if you are more nocturnal, then your dog will sort of reflect that, is what I understand. Mm, but since most people are not, then it doesn't normally happen. But. Well, it's kind of the interesting thing with cats is that, uh, you know, obviously we domesticated dogs. We took wolves and turned them into dogs. Whereas uh, it's often said that cats kind of domesticated themselves or alternatively that cats domesticated humans in a sense that like cats didn't change that much compared to obviously, obviously you can see the similarities between certainly big dogs and wolves, you know, huskies howl and stuff like that. But, you know, a, a domesticated cat, it's like how much have they changed compared to wild cats, for instance. As far as, as, far as I know, um, only the only two species of, or three species of cats that form social groups, I, they might just be the two. It's just um, lions and cheetahs form social uh, groups. Well, of, yeah, lions do. I think cheetahs do kind of but uh it's kind of a, a misunderstanding about cats is that uh domestic cats are not solitary necessarily like cats cats can be both solitary and social um just depends but... on who's around you know it's not like mm -hmm. if they're if they're not if there's not other cats around i don't think it negatively affects them they just sort of it's go into like a cat can be on mode. its own but a cat wouldn't be unhappy with some other cats around as well um, compared to, for instance, rats are social. If a rat is kept on its own, it's going to get depressed. Yeah, that's um, why if I was going to get rats, and I'd have you to gotta get, get like, more at than least one. two, yeah. Yeah, you got to get more than one. Just like, uh, just like with a lot of birds that getting more than one. It's either you got to get two, or you got to spend an immense amount of time with a bird. 
Like yeah, if you it has to a, be around, yeah. Like a cockatoo. They are incredibly demanding. But I, that I suppose that I don't even know if that answers the question that we got. <laughs> what anyway, was the question. Yeah, what was the question about? Something about cats. Was it? About, was the question concerning cats? I, was this the one that began with the Hassan thing, or was this someone else? Oh uh, yeah, no, I think we talked about ravens, one, right? right? We talked about we talked about crows and ravens, but I think we moved on. I think the ravens led us into the <laughs> animals. I think because we Maybe. compared, yeah, because we're like, if a raven can do it, Hassan might be able to do it. Hmm. Anyway, what a f yeah, what a fun tangent. Consider Star Wars Theory to join the next Star Wars Disney Plus defecation on EFAP TVs. I don't know if the vibe would match. His, uh, his like, on-the-moment reactions are a lot more positive <laughs> compared to ours. Yeah. Uh, it would be, <laughs> and he's usually silent, I think, or doesn't talk that much, while we are basically talking throughout all of it. So, yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 different people have different compatibility with stuff like that, and, uh, wouldn't want to force it if it doesn't work out. I'm more than happy to just talk to him about whatever comes out after it comes out, I guess. Um, this question is, who is Boogie? Mm. Huh. Well, well, I hope the documentary you know now. You Yeah, I was going to say, I guess... You need to know. I'm sure the stream itself would have answered that question. Unless they were like, I will not watch until I know who this Boogie is, which, what can you say? Just an incredible personality that um, has changed lives in many ways. By, mm -hmm. by warning them of <laughs> what can come. <laughs> um, Critical made a funny point that Boogie talks like he is a ghost and he's already died, except you know he isn't dead. <laughs> yeah, it'll like, he um, is part of the yeah. sort of the perspective that he doesn't have to, he wants to be able to have the points of recognizing it and changing, but not changing. Yeah. So yeah, it would come across as the ghost because that's what they would do. They would be like, damn. This is what I, my problem was, but I didn't change it. And he even has that attitude where he's like, oh, if only I had done this. And it's like, what do you mean? You're still alive. But that, And then his response will be like, yeah, but I mean, I, you know, I want to, like, basically gorge and, and like, eat <laughs> it's as much so as bullshit. I can. And, and do all that until I die, right? Like, why would, I, why would I tackle any of these problems? I could just leave it the way that it is, and then that's my only joy in life, and then I'll do that until I'm dead. It's a weird, it's like a really defeatist uh, attitude. That would um, be a fun premise, though. Someone who's, who, whose personality is such that if they did die and came back to haunt people, they'd have to work to convince everybody that they're, they're dead and they've, you know. Um, good evening. In good news, I just finished my master thesis and got my probation as a harmacist. I assume it's supposed to be pharmacist. Um, well, thank you for accompanying me in all these years. You know, torture. Yeah, I do like the, the, a pharmacist. Damn, the nature a... of a harmacist is kind of funny. But... A harmacist, <laughs> but it's probably a pharmacist, right? Yeah, it's Congrats. probably. Yeah. Congratulations, Do the wrong course. prescriptions and you're a harmacist, I suppose. Yeah, that dream is always there, ready to go. But um, good for good you. Backup. Master thesis. That sounds like it would be tough. And you nailed it. Good job. Master I like thesis. the idea. Wasn't that... he on the uh, Jedi Council in Episode Three? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Mahler, what are you? Why are you so quiet? Free was so funny. Uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the the idea that someone's completed their master thesis to become a pharmacist, that they're like, ah, oh, now to go home and watch a fat guy be laughed at. <laughs> 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 I do like it though. I think that's there there's some truth in the idea that, you know, this could become of someone's life if they don't, you know, become well. Yeah. That doc was the first time I felt bad for someone but had zero empathy for them. It was hard to watch. Hi Rags. Hi. It does elicit kind a strange of an interesting reaction. way to describe it, it. It tickles your empathy just a little bit, but not like doesn't grab it. Uh, it's kind of weird, because, again, usually whenever I'm watching Boogie, it's like, alright, what's your angle? Like, what's your, uh, what's, what's your strategy? What's your goal here? What are you trying to convince people of that is not true? <laughs> that's usually, yeah. that's usually how I view it. So, like, whenever he says something that's like, it's always like, what does he want you to think? What is actually to be gleaned from what he said? Um, and so that can sort of 
that can be fascinating to see. But it, it doesn't usually put me in a place where I'm like, oh, poor you. It's like, what the fuck is, you know, it's like, what are you doing? What's, what's your, <laughs> what's the trick? Where's Maybe the it's lie? similar to a, a poorly written movie that mm. wants to elicit an emotional response to you and you mm. know what that response should be, but you know it's unearned and it's hollow that's, and artificial. That's a good way of describing it. Because, yeah, like, in a way, he's poorly written. In a way, he's he's incredibly well written. He's a, a well written tarot. He's a well written <laughs> villain. Yeah. There's an interesting uh, freedom to that, you know. There's a. It was almost like you could write Boogie to do anything, and you could contextualize it in some way. Mm -hmm. Matches his systems. Um, Boogie wings movie Bob Nick Akado, Jim Sterling. Why is it always the fat ones? There's plenty of non-fat hyper cows that, that exist. There's like a whole listing. Okay, it's crazy. To be a cow, it's 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 a complicated and long journey. But we've got so many blueprints out there at this point that if you really want to become one, you you can you can do it with ease. I'm sure. I believe in you. There is a there is a certain innate humor to fat, though, isn't there? You know, like of a really really big person that can't really move. It's like impossible to move with grace I in think, a sense. I think it's just going to be a representative of an aspect of an addictive personality that you know sure. can rep uh, can manifest in a lot of other worse ways in their lives. It's, it's almost like um, if they've done that, then they might you know be more than ready to do some other things in terms of humiliation. In Boogie's case, doing it on purpose because he's a, he's a strange man. It's hard uh, to imagine, like, Santa Claus, right? The, the jolly old St. Nicholas as a skinny, thin guy. <laughs> I think he has a lol cow. I was like, yeah, no, he's a chatter. Because well, yeah, no. when it's a skinny guy, it's like in Bad Santa with, like, Billy Bob Thornton. It's just, it's just funny on its face, isn't it? When yeah. Santa's not fat, because it's hard to imagine him as, as anything but fat. Uh, also, thoughts on a free-slash-independent state of Palestine, Fringy? What's that got to do with Boogie? Well, I mean, someone asked earlier about, like, um, uh, I think Hassan and whether or not he's, uh, you know, we could do an impression of him. That doesn't have anything to do with Boogie either, you know? Well, uh, next super chat, huh? <laughs> Kid, okay. Uh, thought on the brick meme influx, and should people fucking stop already? Please say yes. Brick memes. In well, the EFAT memes channel, they've been talking. They've been doing their emojis over there. They're they're doing their little emojis. Well, I mean, down you know, EFAT memes. It'll die down if it's not that funny. Eventually, that's how it goes. I'm. I think I'm leaning towards Team Wood myself. Okay. You know, bricks are nice, but I'm I'm really a fan of Team Wood. What about Stone? Stone is Stone is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like me some Stone. Oh yeah, good to know. Francis became the more likable personality. Oof. Ah, uh, Francis is pretty annoying as a as yeah. a persona that he plays. It's hard to separate from him being an annoying person. Like when he does the fucking flavor voice. Annoying. Oh yeah, the chicken quesadillas. It's like, all right, yeah, I can't, I can't do the boogie voice. All right, the the Francis voice. Well, he just plays up the. I don't know. Because yeah. it's like that's, that's it's annoying. funny. It's just funny. That is, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's like as as a as a comedic character that he's trying to play. It's presented as 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 though it's like funny because it's a stupid voice but none of the jokes or any of the scenarios are funny there's nothing humorous about them it's like oh look he's fat and he speaks weird isn't that funny no mm -hmm. it's not it's annoying i feel like steering some shit so no hard feelings oh boy where's this gonna go rag saying pokemon isn't a strategy game is the equivalent to joseph anderson saying soma isn't a horror game no, 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 you misunderstood. There is a strategy. It's you use your best attack. <laughs> hmm. well, oh my goodness. That, that, that's a strategy. That you're a liar. A Sometimes my best attack good. doesn't work because I'm a waterman and they're a leafman or, or something. So, so there you go. Uh, so you, there you go. That's right. That's a really in-depth uh, strategic gaming experience. It's really, it's really good. It's really good. It, it probably wouldn't line up the same because um, Joseph is like 
uh, going from a sense of like the emotional experience, and he and he's specifically saying like I didn't experience it, so it isn't that, which is really weird. Um, yeah, whereas I'm going for the actual experience. Well, you're talking about the other side of genre, which is the it, like whether or not something is an FPS or or a, a RTS or something. It's like, well, of course, Pokemon could uh, classify that way. It's just like, okay, yes, but like, if you had a shooter where you shot one bullet once per hour, it's like, I mean, maybe, maybe you call that a shooter. I don't know. I just don't like you there know is... at that point. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to be honest, like there I could make some pretty good and really good arguments for why Battlefield is a strategy game, you know, that but it's not typically what people mean when they say that word. So saying it and then having to follow that with some explanation as to why technically there's strategy involved doesn't really doesn't really help. And if you're just making up definitions for yourself that you then have to share with everyone else after the fact, then I mean, just don't. That's not really it's not really helpful, and you're an asshole. Um, funnily enough, though, if someone had asked me like, "What is, what is Pokemon?" Or like, uh, I'd probably call it an RPG. A Tim-based RPG is probably how I'd put it. Yeah, that seems more uh, uh, at strategy game. That just doesn't seem. That's not what I. Yeah, that's not what I would go for first. Even if we were having conversations about the merits of how much strategy goes into it, when I think of strategy, I'm thinking of like Civ or Age of Empires or XCOM, um, that have very different like core gameplay loops compared to Pokemon. It feels like Pokemon is more about. Yeah, it's it's more of like an RPG if there was a description or an adventure game, you know, because you're going on an adventure through the world, leveling up. Um, yeah. I'd go for RPG over a strategy game. It's almost like a turn-based collect collection game, or well, I think of it as uh, kind of combat. like in the same way you have turn-based combat and you're building a party and you you make decisions about who's going to be in your party and um, what what you what moves they have, and you can build those moves in the same way that you like in an RPG can choose the traits and like abilities and stuff. To me, that just... But but then this kind of highlights the point that definitions can get blurry because, I mean, in a certain sense, there is strategy to something like Call of Duty, but you wouldn't call it a strategy game. Uh, you probably wouldn't even call it a tactics game if you were trying to figure out definitions, like, down to that detail. You just go with what it is principally, which would be first-person shooter. And I said Pokemon, it's, yeah, RPG. Well, and I think someone would be like, look, when I got to Brock and my Pikachu got annihilated... I had to go and figure out which Pokemon I was going to capture and level up in order to defeat him, and that's strategy. And you'd be like, eh. Think yeah, about I mean, it. Is technically, like, but if the answer is Butterfree all the time, then it's like, It's well, not even that. I mean, it's anything. It's just the amount of time you want to spend. That's it. <laughs> like, if you want to... Yeah, it's true. I mean, if you just want to grind Pikachu's you could, levels... Yeah, Pikachu could you know, defeat Onyx with Tackle. So it's like, all right. It's, uh... Yeah, like, there is an amount of strategy to Water beats Fire, Fire beats Grass, Grass beats water. There is strategy there, but I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I don't know where we were. Like wanna... I said, one bullet per ten minutes. Would you call that game a shooter? It's like, mm. what else are we doing in it? <laughs> like, mm. they're walking around. At that point, I think people yeah, would say walking cause... simulator. Because yeah, if you consider, um, like, what the. I mean, a way to describe gameplay loops is, in a way, emergent. Like, it just it describes, due to its mechanics, whatever people end up doing in the game because of its mechanics. So, for instance, maybe you could look at the stuff in the game and be like, well, because you do this in the game, uh, that means it's this kind of game, you know? So, mm. like, if you look at Pokemon as an example, what do you do most of the time? Well, you wander around a world, and you don't really solve puzzles, but in a way you kind of do because the strategy is so simplistic in that game, you also might be like, oh, it's, it's basically rock, paper, scissors, is, and you know what the opponent plays. That's essentially a puzzle game. Did they use a water Pokemon? Then use a leaf one. Did they use a fire one? Use a water one. In a way, mm -hmm. it's a super simplistic puzzle game. Um, but it's also a collection game because there's lots of Pokemon. And then you you want to get your Pokemon up to the up levels. So it's kind of like an, an RPG, sort of, where you make them stronger and give them abilities. abilities. But it's so... Like, it's when something becomes so simplified, it almost waters down the genre itself. Uh, uh yeah. 
I mean, I guess it's just that at the end of the day, a game is probably going to be more one thing than another, uh, even though a game is obviously going to have overlap. It's just like impossible. You know, you can have a first person adventure game, uh, first person shooter that's also an adventure game. You can have an RPG that's also a strategy game. You can have a platformer that's also like a puzzle game. Um, there's a whole bunch of different overlap, I guess. I guess well, what would you what would you call chess, right? Uh, I would say that chess is a strategy game. Yeah, so chess, uh, chess being called a strategy game, pretty reasonable, right? Because of mm -hmm. the strategies involved in how the pieces move, and you have all the board there. And in a way, chess is essentially two people playing a puzzle game against each other. You could say that. The puzzle is constantly changing its shape based off of where the pieces are and what the next couple moves are, and everyone knows mm. what the end state is. So describing games with these kinds of words can be a little, you know, a little uh, amorphous sometimes, but I generally as long as you use words that people kind of relate to and understand, then, you know, then you should be I Gucci. Do, I would say that genre is general. I would say genre is way more useful with reference to video games than it is to narrative because genre is going to probably tell you a lot about what kind of gameplay experience it is whereas if you tell somebody it's science fiction it's like well that could mean that could mean anything you know like it it tells you something about probably when it's set and probably what the subject matter is um but as for as for like the specific breakdown of the of, of like the course of events that could happen in that story you it doesn't really tell you a whole lot um compared to it's a first person shooter it's like okay so it's first person pov the primary gameplay loop involves shooting things so it's combat um those sorts of descriptions of gameplay are going to be very important in terms of determining like if it's an experience that you're interested in um but i guess the same is kind of true for genre as well um I guess what's interesting is that, like, what makes a first-person shooter good or bad compared to what makes something good science fiction? It's like, well, that's kind of, hmm, you know, because people can get a bit yeah, weird a with, like, their categorizations of, oh, right, well, what is good science fiction? Is like, is there a big difference between good science fiction and good, good drama in general, or, like, good thriller, or good romance? Um... Compared to, well, I mean, what is it that makes a first-person shooter good is probably not going to be the same as what makes a uh, real-time strategy game good. It's all, it's a complicated thing, genre, all right? It's a prescriptive, descriptive, how useful is it, and how not useful is it, how blurry is the lines, it's a complicated thing. Yeah. Not my favorite thing to talk about, but, you know, no, I... some people are really <laughs> keen on it or whatever. Um, also with, like, so this happens at some point, but as well, earlier the better to, the Mike Clum actually sent us a super chat saying thank you for reacting to the film. I don't know if you remember that. It's I just do, funny. yes. Uh, and thank you, funny. Mike. I appreciate that. You had, you, you created quite the, uh, quite the piece for you, future generations. You made a lot of sacrifices, Mike. You did. You went to Boogie's house, <laughs> talked with him, looked him in the eye. Got oh. pulled in. Yes. Uh, happy to see ER laugh and talk more. Yeah, what are the odds that this was the episode that really got him going, you know? This is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the amount of... There was some things we were hearing from him in that episode we'd never heard before. He was, like, genuinely horrified by some of the things in the doc. No, he was... It's just, you know, compared to... Compared to us, where we're kind of like boogie law experts almost, and uh, and he didn't. Yeah, know some anything. like normal information to a boogie documentarian is is absolutely mind blowing to the average person. You sort of forget that you're like, oh right, yeah, you don't know. Okay, well, that's right. Yeah, you don't know about all of the crazy tales of boogie. Uh, speaking of disappointing YouTubers, have y'all heard about Gerard the Completionist? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. we have. Very um, unfortunate. Yeah. That's no good. I think that story's um, kind of over too, right? Because we've had the full story from everybody, which is just that uh, not a, a very incompetent job was done with the charity to the point where it took a decade for money to properly move from where it's it supposed to be. It to... Accumulated, it had accumulated over from like 2014 to about, you know, like only a few Yeah, but like the ago. earliest non-moved funds came from a decade ago. 
Uh, yeah, and of course, people donating with the pretty obvious expectation that that money is going to be going to the charities fairly promptly. Maybe not on the same day, but, you know, certainly not potentially years later. Yeah. Uh, obviously that specific charities will reference of like, oh yeah, this, this charity and then this charity and then this charity. And then it's like, oh, well, we're actually thinking about which charities we want to donate it to. We haven't made up our minds yet. It, it all just seems pretty, uh, he, he, um... I guess, yeah, you're right. Like, the story is kind of over. The The money has now been donated, right? The money is now being donated. As far um, as I'm aware, yeah. I and suppose there's unless there's any that. legal stuff that happens, well, it might be technically finished. It's just a matter of the social repercussions. Uh, he still gets comments on his YouTube channels about completing his career. So... I don't um, think, uh, because he's kept making videos, I mean, as he probably was always gonna do, I suppose. It is curious, it's like, so what'll happen ultimately, and it's like, well, the channel will be, uh, it'll shrink in terms of people actually supporting it, but, you know, there's a steady influx of new people somewhat who get made aware of this, and the comment section will always be filled with these, mostly memes, I'd imagine, but... It is crazy uh... that... Just yeah. gonna try and move on. I guess that's what you would do. I mean, if 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 there's no more information to tell, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, if the the story's over, it's like, well, then what? What's next? What do you do? I was like, yeah. Dude, the to top honest. comment I could see one of them says, "You know, he's keeping his face off the thumbnails because it's part of a strategy to mount a brute force comeback." <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't know about oh, the brute goodness. force comeback. I don't know about that. Well, it's it's Plus probably he's, he's keeping on making videos like normal, almost like nothing is really. Happening. Which is a form of brute forcing, I guess. Like it's, just trying to. Yeah, yeah, I guess in that sense, yeah, uh, keeping his. I'm just yeah, like, hey guys, stuff. Super Mario RPG. <laughs> it's Ooh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, Super Mario RPG, huh? Yeah, they're right. You scroll back far enough, and there's a lot of just images of him on the on the cover. And then this happens, and then he's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. <laughs> Uh, and, he, and, 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 and he just done like a video about how Shovel Knight saved him, like emotionally. It's like, well, wasn't the meme there that the that he was remaking a bunch of his old videos, and that Shovel Knight was like the one before he would have been done with that as a series of like completing a remake of a bunch of older videos? Yeah, which again contributes so. to the whole completionist meme. Yes, because <laughs> there's so many memes that you can make with the name the completionist. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think geez. the thing that killed him was uh, all the clips from the conversation he had with Mudahar and um, Carl Yobst, I think. This, yeah, um... yeah, I yeah. mean, was, especially with, like, the massive focus on the optics of, like, well, if I donated it now, it would look bad. It's like, dude, like, yeah. the, main, what? What? The, main, the main concern is the money actually getting to the places it needs to be to do the things that the people who donated it thought it was going to do. That's, yeah. like, the number one thing. So getting really obsessed with optics and everything is just, um... It's it's not great. I mean, it, it just sort of leaves an impression, you know, about where priorities are. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, that was what it was all about, right? Is like, people donate with the expectation that the money is working, you know, sometime around when they donate the money, and not that it's been sitting in a bank account, probably losing interest, losing value because of inflation, um, and not actively doing work for research and everything. Um, yeah. Because, like, memes aside, that that sucks. That's, um, that's really, that's really, uh, that's really shitty. But, um, I guess we'll just have to see, uh, how the, yeah, the story unfolds from here. Uh, assuming that's not the final chapter and that whenever his name comes up, people are just like, ew. Oh, well, I guess the question is, uh, if he's actually going to sue, you know, Mudahar and, uh, I... that, that Carl guy. Can't see that being a good uh, move. That is, no, uh, that would be pretty terrible. Unless his strategy was that he had a huge sound legal ground to do it, assuming that he could win. Um, the only thing that I could see that happening is if he was essentially taking a total and complete exit from the internet, period. Which uh, is seemingly the opposite of what he wants to do. He wants to keep doing what he was doing. Yeah, because yeah. I think that if he did sue them and was successful, people would fucking hate him. Yeah, uh... like... I mean, it would be... yeah, because it doesn't change that people... It doesn't change what everybody understands about the situation, which is, oh, the money was donated, and it sat in a bank account for years. Like, that's what people were upset about. So if it there's people other... people finding out about it to... Well, it's, it's yeah. just, you know, it, how long would it have sat in there if there was no reporting on it? 
it, it got don it obviously got donated because there was reporting on it. Yeah. Um. If not, then who knows how long it would have just sat there. I mean, the you know, it's not unheard of to think that years and years and years go by still, and it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't get to the people who need it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it just seems though. I mean, it it does seem it's like well, why why did that happen? It's like I don't know, man. It seems like it was just incompetence. <laughs> like that that yeah, doesn't be the case. It's just like even if it's non malicious or non like money grubbing and stuff, it's like there's a certain level of incompetence that cannot be tolerated. Like that's just uh, insane. Well, especially when we're talking about charity. Yeah. Um, so so closes that chapter. Presumably, we'll see. Mm, hopefully. Um. The documentary by June the King is 100% better than his and more honest, and he went out of his way to discredit it. Funnily enough, I think there is a, uh, a Lol Cows episode about one. that. Yeah, so yeah, with this one, the fudging of numbers, how Boogie tried to blame shit on the documentarian, and it's like, <laughs> I just, you just, you cannot believe Boogie. He is beyond uh, trust. You just... Well, yeah, the one that was most insane was, I lost 700,000 on crypto. It's like, well... If you gain it on paper and then you lose it on paper and you return to where you were, nobody nobody's thinking of that as a loss. They're thinking of that as oh, you didn't make any money. Well, it's it just paints a different. It's it, yeah, you that, can yeah, you might, baffling. in his mind he might consider that a loss, but, but in no in reality in no he world, came out even in no, when he yeah, cashed in, out. exactly in no sane world would someone consider that a loss. It's on paper. It doesn't yeah. matter until it's actually in fucking cash. Like, yeah, if you if you go to matter. Las Vegas and gamble, and you bring if you bring a thousand dollars with you for this trip, and you gamble it, and you work that up to ten thousand dollars, instead of cashing out like an intelligent person who already is on an insanely lucky hot streak, you decide to keep playing and playing and playing, and eventually you work that down to the original thousand before you throw up your hands and say, "I'm done." Then that's not a nine thousand dollars. Come out watch. even, and it's honestly, exactly right, yeah. That's really actually pretty fucking excellent because you gambled for an insanely long time, came out even, probably had an amazing tense time throughout the whole thing, and when you got back to eat back out to even where you started, you walked away. So you probably don't have a problem, uh, or you very well might not have a problem. You might have just been like, you know what, I came here with a thousand. Let's just see what happens with a night. I'm here for the experience. Then you know, there. If 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 you told me, oh, sure, you but... know that if. But, but Boogie doesn't have the, the fun Las Vegas experience. With no, in his no, mind it would be, God be... damn, I could have had that money. Uh, but then yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't make it because I didn't actually cash out. Like, I didn't sell. I didn't, I didn't realize my gains. <laughs> and so it's just like this thing of, damn, I could have had a bunch. But again, if you, if you take some money and you're like doubling, tripling its value in a year and you don't sell it, like, the, you... you at best, in terms of just, like, general investment in, like, the stock market, the best that you could really expect is, like, 10% per year. <laughs> like, if you're, if you're doubling or quadrupling your money, that's an insane return in a year to just be well, like, oh, well, you know, whatever, I'll just see how high it goes. <laughs> like, well, When I hear about the 700000 that he could have potentially made, I'm thinking, how did you... Like, I would have cashed out long before... Because to me, the idea that it gets to fifty grand, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars that you're making, I I can't imagine. Like I'm a, I'm pretty cautious in a lot of things. I I generally err on the side of caution, and I show a lot of discretion, and I and I'm pr pretty cautious in a lot of things. So when it comes to money like that, I would have cashed out ages ago, so, and, and I would and if I watched it go up after that, I would just tell myself, you know what, I I played it safe and I still made this huge chunk of money. And yeah, sure, if I would have mm -hmm. kept it, I would have well, made more. But you know what, I didn't know that at the time. I made a smart. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I went the route of wisdom, and it, sometimes it's just how it goes, and it's fine. I still made a lot of money. But for him to get to seven hundred thousand dollars, I feel like the second that needle starts going down, you just be like on a hair trigger to sell. I assume his perspective was, I'm on the verge of this cranking all the way up to like five million, like any second now, and then, um, which it's is just you know, that's just way past it, the the. There's that. That's what it does to a person's mind, where, though, isn't it? Like, uh, I suppose so, because yeah. a lot of people like they get to that that line, that, that threshold of so much money, like fuck it, it doesn't matter. 
You know, like what to me, right? They're the just numbers between, on the screen, you know. Yeah, they're just for numbers me, on the, screen. the difference between 300 and 400,000 is like, yeah, I know that's a hundred thousand dollar difference, it's a big chunk of change. But in the way that I see it, I'm like, that's just it's like once you get to a certain point, it's like, fuck it, it's just who cares? Like, well, I don't yeah, know what I'm it's gonna do. Like with that. How you'd be more mad if you lost a $50 note from your wallet, you'd be like, fuck, 50 bucks, like I just lost 50 bucks. Meanwhile, yeah, if someone stole your wallet, you get 50 bucks in it, yeah. Meanwhile, compared to like seeing numbers move by like thousands or tens of thousands on a screen, that it just doesn't have the same. I, I'm pretty sure that's uh because it's something that in terms of like the psychology of buying things, credit right? cards, paying, yeah, yeah, credit yeah, cards versus cash. When you are writing out your, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever regularly use checks to pay for things, but it's 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 not used often now. But it still is in some places. But I, I suppose I'm, I was kind of on the tail end of it. I'm, I'm talking to you like I'm your fucking grandpa. But, uh, but I was on the end of, you know, kind of using checks semi regularly, where I used to pay like rent for an apartment in a check, where I'd fill it out, write it out, and I would, you know, give it to him. And having to write that number two different ways, both numerically and writing it out, you know, in text, or forking over cash that bills physically in your hand that you're giving someone, it's a lot psychologically, it, it, it's a lot more um, indicative of you are losing something. You're giving something away. Not, not just in the physical reality of you are literally giving someone bills of money or you are literally giving someone a check with numbers written on them, but when you have like a debit or credit card, you swipe it on a machine, put it, you know, no cash back, pin number, take it back, and it goes back in your wallet, it doesn't feel like you physically lost anything because you haven't. You, you, it's still where it is. You still have the card in your wallet. It's still yours. You haven't given away anything. It is interesting to think about. Um, there's a lot of books on psychology and money. That would be kind of the thing, you know, if, if Boogie was to do it all over again and have some advice and be like, you know, it wouldn't hurt to read a book on investing. <laughs> you know, it, it probably wouldn't hurt to to uh to do that, but uh, well, that's yeah, too late now. He'll totally do that, hundred percent. Oh, I'm sure he would. Yeah. Um, in the words of Michael from the Office, "No, God, please, no, no." no. <laughs> I wonder what part we're up to there. Yeah, it could be any of it. Uh, er, you'll never see the super chat, but God bless you for your latest video. You're doing the Lord's work. High rags. Hello. I have a few more characters to use so I can just say about anything. I've always wanted to say that, and then they got cut off. Oh, jeez. Damn. Uh, Boogie with this window full of ducks. Uh, Movie Bob with his window full of soda cans. Wings is probably full of pieces of controllers and monitors. Yeah, you gotta have your window collection, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> man, the video Windows. You're, you're gonna have to catch me up on the window lore. I don't know much about. Wait things. for uh for book for wings on Windows. Yeah, what's, what's I, I don't window? know about that. I only know about the. Did he break them? The like he breaks his monitors? Because I know about him throwing shit at monitors. Which I can is, explain like, it I, if you guys didn't is, follow. He's a... referencing the two window collections, and now he's inventing a third one for wings because that would be funny. Oh, we, right, right, we know yeah. about Movie Bob's like soda still, can collection. Oh, with, uh, I broken, he was yeah. collecting windows when he said that. I was like, I mean, I guess if you want, you know, but... Well, and you could collect all of the versions of Windows, you know, 95, 98, oh, yeah, uh, that's Millennium true, yeah. Edition, XP, and everything. And then you but, can uh, the different languages for places around the world, and yeah, all that oh, stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. An operating system collector, yeah. It's, uh, the, the clip of... Yeah. The one with, with Wiggs throwing his controller, like, he throws it forward, and then he just looks at his screen for a second, like, that cracked it! <laughs> and guess. he did. Of all the places to throw a controller, because I, I understand <laughs> that there's this, this bestial, basal part of your psyche that just wants to destroy something in rage, and if it's your own stuff, you know, if I, controllers are expensive, you shouldn't do it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, you should have an object that's specifically there to be thrown, something that is soft, maybe, something that maybe, like, something that's rubber, that's durable, maybe not rubber because it'll bounce off things and hit other things, but, you know, something you could punch, a pillow, a couch, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a stuffed animal, but to think to throw a controller, which is already, we're talking 50, 60, 
bucks. And if it's one of those elite controllers or whatever, those are like, what, 90, $100? Mm -hmm. And Crossy. then to take that and to add more insult to injury, to, to add injury to injury, I suppose, you throw it at your monitor. Your 4K monitor as your well. Your 4K monitor. And monitors can be quite expensive. 4K well, monitors are going to run you. Yeah, what, 4K. At uh, this, start, this clip was from a while ago, too. Yeah, this was like 2016, 2017, something so like that. So we're talking expensive. At least 400 $500. minimum? Yeah, at least 400 Something like bucks. that. Because if it's but, I mean, relatively is, small and 60 hertz, but 4K you know? still. Normally he does throw it backwards. He uh, He's very practiced in the art of throwing his controller in a fit of rage. Mm -hmm. And to think, if, if you were... If, if you were doing the persona of an angry gamer, right, and you were constantly turning around and throwing shit at a wall behind you, then if you're playing the long game, the accumulations of bumps and marks that might build up in that wall could be a very, um, a very uh, natural and, I don't, I don't know what the word would be for it, non-artificial form of... It was uh, kind of like, uh, of, of, you know, performance art materializing. Kind of, yeah. Whereas just, years go by and <laughs> builds up full of marks and shit. That's just, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but, you know. If you're particularly committed to the performance, though, you know, hey, knock yourself yeah. out. Total dedication to the craft. You see some of these clips of, like, streamers getting really mad while playing games and, like, smashing. You see the clips where they hit the keyboard so hard that all the keys start flying off of I it. can't imagine... Uh, I can't hard. imagine. No, I like, can't imagine. I imagine that. throwing um, something. Throwing something is easy for like. I feel like I could throw something if I got so pissed off. I, 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 I got a bag of almonds here, or I got a tube of chapstick. I've got some, a couple uh, coins. You know, like I can imagine throwing something like that, but I can't imagine grabbing something like a controller. I guess you're already grabbing it. You know, so you're halfway there, so to speak, and then chucking it at another valuable object that I have. <laughs> Well, it's just, you know... It feels it good for that microsecond. You. I, yeah, and then, but before it hits the thing you've thrown it at, you realize you've made a t terrible, horrific yeah, sure mistake. Do you guys you remember wake those... up just in time to know, to watch as you lucidly <laughs> and witness that light. object careening it's into... The... It's over, you've committed to the course of action, like a spaceship that's already made its, you know, it's launched in and it's just being carried by space. Oh, that would be... That would be the great time to have like the uh, the little mini rewind superpower where you can go back like ten seconds in time or something. So if you're like really aggressive and you have to let shit out, you could just go fucking ham for ten seconds on anything and then just you know go back. Imagine you were like, a little too late with triggering good? the rewind, and so you trigger Ooh, it, yeah, like the yeah, maximum goes all the way back to throwing it. Like no. <laughs> <laughs> And then you realize that you're doomed no matter how much you try to You keep trying to, like, grab it with the other arm. <laughs> or throw something to try and protect it really quickly. Anyway. Anyway. Hey, y'all. Big fan. Don't know if you know if you mind me asking. What are some things you've learned when first starting YouTube that helped you improve slash grow? Hmm. Honestly, I would say... I don't know why I started out saying honestly. I'd like to think that dishonestly, think nothing. That. Yeah, uh, if I was, yeah. Um, let me think back a little bit. Let's see. A big piece of advice that I got early on to make videos better. Um, I mean, I learned pretty early on, and this is reflected in the constant advice that we give when we are asked this question. Having a good microphone really is one of the most important things you could probably do. It yeah. is very important to have a good microphone. a large microphone. portion of the audience that don't even care what visuals you have at all. Yes. No matter what um, you're doing. A lot of, yeah, a lot of the times a video is going to be second screen content. They're going to be multitasking. They're going to have the video playing while they lay in bed, you know, going to sleep, or while they're cooking dinner, or while they're just lounging around on their phone, tapping away, or while they're playing a game. So, a lot, and I'm not, we're not saying visuals aren't important, of course, but one thing that is going to be virtually guaranteed is that people will hear well, so your video. The point should be made clear when you say reverse it. Like, if you focus entirely on visuals and nail it, and it's the most amazing visuals ever, but you have one of the worst voices ever, that video is getting uh, crippled. 
You'd be but like, if you have a good hmm. speaking voice and a good microphone, and your visuals are shit, but you're giving good information, people will stick around. Yeah, and I think people get a sense of like we've seen that a lot. People will get Irrelevant a sense visuals. of uh, it'll improve. Meanwhile, with bad voice, they'll be like, oh. but you can improve yeah, a bad it, voice. <laughs> You, you can, absolutely. There are literal voice coaches that teach people how to sing and how to speak. There are accent coaches. Uh, it's in the credits of a lot of movies and things of that nature. You can improve the way that you speak. It just takes practice and dedication. And, you know, you, the way that you speak is, it, it's physiological. It's something you can train, something you can practice. It's, you know, it's like doing a whole bunch of push-ups all the time. You know, you'll get stronger. It's the same general idea. It might take a bit more focus because speaking is such a natural part of our existence and society that you don't really give it any thought um but once you sort of i guess hone in on it and realize that it's something you want to change it could turn out to be something really good don't give up don't despair i don't like it when people say i just have a you know terrible voice there's something i could do about a lot of people it. say i have way have better voices voice. than the people who are making videos sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true and maybe if you have a bad voice you say you know do you just chad yes it and lean into it as part of a character or whatever i mean that's what yms has done after all uh, you know, he does the, 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 the flat, monotonous kind of voice. You know, I don't, I don't particularly enjoy that, but he plays it to, you know, make videos, and it works well for his style of delivery. And if you have a flat and relatively monotonous voice, and a lot of people don't actually have monotonous voices, but, you know, uh, but that can help to accentuate when you want to actually show, um, uh, uh, well, you really want to stress some sort of emotion or exaggeration. Because a lot of people have the opposite problem, where constantly they are throwing their voice in such a way as to imply incredible exaggeration, but it becomes overplayed and you can't really tell what it is that they're trying to exaggerate. It's kind of like if someone swears far too much. If you swear too much, then you run out of words that you can use to express the extremes of how you feel. And that's something that I think I need to work on is, luckily this hasn't bled into real life, but on the internet, a lot of us have a tendency to swear a whole lot. We drop the, you know, the F-bombs and whatnot all the time. But I think it's probably good for me to try and work on chilling in that regard so that when I really want to use it, it's got sting. Um, I still remember there's been one time in my life where I heard one of my aunts say the F-bomb in regards to something, and it was, it must have been at least, like, 15 years ago, a long time, and I still remember where I was when it happened in the context of when it occurred, so, it's just something for consideration. Um, what is, what's the answer for you guys? <laughs> Sorry well, I was, I was, like, 50-50 with you on that one anyway, but I'll, I'll add to it as well, that, uh, they don't prepare you at all for public relations or for, uh, understanding how to react to criticism slash oh, yeah. brigading slash like really harsh like even you know kill threats and stuff death threats so how should you react to all this is a blanket term it's like try not to look into any of it in the same way you would if someone said it to you face to face because it's not the same um, yeah people don't communicate with each other on the internet and through comment sections in the way that they would you know in the flesh it's it's just sort of it's it's a different world the internet in a way yeah and and people so. Just humans behave very differently when they believe they're completely anonymous slash there's no re repercussions for what they say. Yeah, and in a way, that's both the, the great and terrible thing about the internet. You have yeah. to take it as it is. Um, it's just sort, of the, just sort of the nature of the beast, you know? You got, are you going to saddle it or let it trample you? It's kind of up to you. Keep it in mind. Uh... Don't let it destroy you. Something I would say is that it's worthwhile to not almost psychologically trap yourself into a niche that doesn't interest you or that limits you in some way. Um, something I've always noticed is that it never really made sense to me why someone would choose to be like a YouTuber Call for a YouTuber specific... or something well, like so that. that I, I can at least understand that one in the sense of Call of Duty is probably never going to end. So there's always going to be stuff to talk about. But then there are other times when it's like, if you lock yourself into a, a, a series that ends, it's like, well, shit, what are you going to do now? Um, and then there's also a matter of you could just like, without even realizing, kind of end up 
only talking about certain types of things and then that can create expectations in an audience for things that you should or shouldn't cover uh, or that there's only so much that you can or cannot do. And you see people talk about how, you know, that it's limiting and it makes them depressed and they feel like they can't make what they want to make. And if, it seems to me that it's important to always have the attitude of, well, I want to make what interests me and, you know, whatever. Like, if that's, like, don't get too, don't get too obsessed with, like, views and stuff. Because that just seems to, I don't know, that, that just doesn't seem conducive to a uh, healthy attitude and approach to creation. If you're constantly obsessed with, like, analytics and is this what people want to see or is this what I ought to be doing? Is this, is this you know, trendy or anything like that? You don't want to turn yourself into, like, a slave to just nebulous, vague trends and, and algorithms and things like that. You, you always want to be focused on what is it that you are actually interested in uh, creating and talking about and doing. And yeah, to try and make the kind of content that you can. enjoy and have an interest in. Uh, be willing to change your content if your preferences change, which they very likely will, uh, because you change as time goes on. Yeah, and if there's a subject you have nothing to say on, that's fine. You don't have to talk about it's it. It's fine. I mean, just in general, like on the internet, it's okay to not have super strong, immediate opinions on everything, because a lot of people yeah, have had to eat be. a lot of words <laughs> because... They spoke way too quickly and way too strongly about something that they just learned about seconds before. <laughs> it's funny. This might sound funny coming from us, considering that that's we talk all the time. But seriously, you don't have to. It's okay to say I have no opinion on this, or I don't know. If we, the more the, the more that we can say I don't know, like in general, I think the better off we all be. And we can just be like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I. I keep trying to remind myself of that as well. It's like, it's okay to just say, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have an opinion on that. EFAP for the killer when We don't have anything planned, because uh, we just never did. But uh, there's no not nothing to say that there wouldn't be something in the future for the killer in some way, shape, or form, maybe. Don't yeah. know. A lot of the times we just watch movies because we really like watching movies. And sometimes a movie is really good and we just don't do an episode on it you know we didn't do one for oppenheimer we haven't done one for the killer and there's plenty of other examples we didn't do one for barbie that's right we didn't do one for barbie and that was a movie so, yeah there's actually uh, that's kind of funny because we're talking about like covering trends and stuff it's like we don't cover so many popular films we just uh it's really on it's always about where our interest lies yeah um and it should be like so your interest lies with aquaman 2 and it's like little bit we are tracking the dc universe quite a bit <laughs> Uh, and some things are just uh, something like Aquaman 2 is just silly. It's a really silly, dumb movie. So in a way, it's fun to talk about, you know, that in its own way. Uh, talking about Batman and Robin is really fun. Um, <laughs> but there are some movies that are really good that just have different vibes when you talk about them, I suppose. And you could appreciate them for how good they are. But sometimes it's just, you know, you just, you know, chat a bit afterwards. It's a good reference for you to use, a good thing to recommend. But it's not really like multiple hour long discussion level kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, bum, 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 bum. Stay strong, chaps. This one's going to be a tough one. It was, and we made it. It was. It was tough. Um, would you rather live in a huge house with a small plot of land or a small house with a huge plot of land? Five and 15 small square house. miles, respectively. Small house uh, and a huge plot of land. 50, wait, 50. Sorry, what was the size? Five and fifteen square miles, respectively. Five miles of land, square miles. But does That's that mean? Does that mean that on the other no, one you'd get five fifteen square miles house or fifteen square mile land? Um, I assume is what that means. Yeah, but well, that is said respectively. So meaning the other one is a what? A fifteen square mile house? Um, I, I at that I point, mean, I just get the house and sell it. <laughs> Well, yeah, but both of these seem like they'd be really difficult to manage. I figured it was going to be because I would say, yeah, I'd be cool with a small house on like a like an acreage or something, or a uh, you know, like yeah, because I'd, uh, I'd be cool with some land. I'm cool with land sure. too, but like, like it, not the kind that I can't mile? take care of properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, holy crap, that's that I sounds mean, like that. Depending on where you are, it it might not take 
any management whatsoever like literally yeah, none well you are um, that so... might require immense management like if you live in a bushfire prone area there's a lot of management that you would need to do to make sure that your whole property is like prepared in case there's a bushfire that happens you know like controlled burns and stuff like that um of course it depends yeah yeah i uh, <laughs> the land the, the actual size is kind of you know that's the thing that's take the house i'm probably not going to live in it though yeah, but in terms of a more general thing of, oh, would you want, like, a, you know, a massive mansion, or would you rather have a normal house on, like, a like an acreage or a couple of hectares? I'd probably go for the house on a couple of hectares. I just... Yeah, I'd much rather, within the spirit of the question being, yeah, would you rather have a small house on a lot of land, or a big house and not much land? i definitely have a small house on a lot of land. Yep. Yeah, because well, that, that's that's, that's how I would address the spirit of the question is by selling this fifteen square mile house and then getting a reasonably sized house and a reasonable amount of land with it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's just a reasonable well, amount nature. of land. Means you can have a uh, you can you can get some like sheep or some llamas. You can get a big chicken coop. You can you you know you can get a bunch of animals and have like a little farm. Yep, you can make a little raven preserve, raven sanctuary. You know, I mean, I'd be really tempted to if do. I had, you know, a land like that of, like, some kind of, you know, animal rehab. That's That sounds pretty cool, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it, and even it was, if it was, if you did nothing with it, it was, if it was just land out there, then it would still, I think, even if you did, like I said, nothing with it, and it's just essentially wilderness apart from the road in and out of your place. Oh, I mean, that'd be that, nice I would too. like that. Yeah, you know, I, I would still like that. Cool. That would be something that I actually, you know, like. Said I would like that. I would like that. That would be something I would like. Oh boy, would I, boy, would I like it. <laughs> I think he'd like I it. Just, I'm just, I guess I would think I was just literally lost in thought, just kind of imagining <laughs> what you were imagining the kind of land that. it was, especially if it had like a like a big old pond on it, or if it was Ooh. like a river ran through it, something Ooh, along be, you know something of that well. nature. That'd be great. Don't cry for me. I'm already dead. Boogie Gumble. Hey, don't compare Boogie to Barney. Well, Barney is to, an artist. You have to take it up with that guy, I guess. He's uh, He feels it's appropriate. And again, Barney is somebody who I actually just fully feel bad for, rather than rather than whatever it is. The complicated... Well, not even complicated. They're pretty simple feelings towards Boogie. I don't like him. <laughs> but Barney is an artist. Well, Boogie respects you, Frankie. He respects you. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Hi, bros. Got the coup failure this week and have been feeling pretty bad, but after watching this with you guys, I don't feel so shitty anymore. Hope you guys have a good day slash evening and stay healthy. Hell yeah. Oh, will do. Thanks much. Hope you get to you yeah, feeling uh, better soon. Be feeling better now, hopefully. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here in Norway, you have to show that you lose some weight before they let you have a gastric bypass. I think that's how it works everywhere. That's what I've heard, yeah. I think so. Yeah, because... Yeah, I think so. Didn't Boogie, Boogie had to lose weight? weight. They, had to, they had to show they could commit to a diet, which is funny because then they don't afterward. Like, <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah, what more can you do as a, a, as doctors? You're like, well, <sighs> yeah. At what point is it just? It's your money to throw away. I mean, I guess. Like, how much? You know, what more do you want us to do for well, you? Well, it's just you know, it's not like an easy fix of oh, your stomach's smaller, all good. You know, yeah. like there's no change required. Uh, Hunger Game prequel is my new favorite. On script is rock solid cause and effect, and or level world building and character work. Even Ziegler is tolerable, which was shocking. Um, um interesting. Sure. I, 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 no I one has told it. me anything about it because I don't think anyone in my circles or ours even is like into. I just yeah, Hunger I Game. couldn't care less about Hunger Games. Um, glad you enjoyed it though. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I was just thinking to myself, like, yeah, I don't even know what anyone's opinions on that movie are, because I don't think anyone saw it. It did. Did it? Uh, how did it do in the box office? Anyone know? I think it ended up doing okay. It uh, didn't have a great debut, but it didn't drop much, so kind of had long legs. All right. Hmm. All right. And then they say HG Bourbon Snack is good rat. HG Bourbon Snack. Bourbon Snack. HG Bourbon Snack. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Neither do I. I'm not sure. I feel like I'm missing something obvious, but there we are. Um, I really like your show. I had to buy another Super Chat. Apparently, I'm not very good at condensing my thoughts to accommodate a character limit. I tend to ramble. If only I was similar to... And it just cuts off. 
<gasps> oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you liked the show, though. I'm glad you had a good time. I think yeah. a lot of people had a good time. That was a very enjoyable EFAP. It's a, it's a highly rated episode, that one. Poor Boogie. Uh, Poor Boogie. <laughs> looking into Take the life, break. you know, staring through that Take window. At least Movie Bob calls it a small meal. <laughs> <laughs> the noble goldfish. Oh, God. Where I could stay confined to limitations placed before me, unfortunately, I have the habit of outgrowing my bowl. Perhaps I'll be able to shorten my chats in the future, too. And then they got cut off again. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, no, it happened this, again. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It oh, happening. no. Guy's got really terrible luck. Uh, it feels as though in the 25th century, America was built specifically for Bookie. The, I uh, mean, it's hard to imagine how he would have existed in a different time, you know? Sometimes you run across those people, particularly on the internet. Well, it's kind of like, like how are you, you it know, goes both like, ways oh, in the sense that it's like he wouldn't survive then it's like well no he wouldn't have existed as in like he yeah. wouldn't have been able to get that fat and useless like he it wouldn't have happened yeah yeah like if, if, the... you know if he was born in the 1900s it's like well shit i mean he, you know he would have been in his 30s during the great depression the, the, nobody was his life is the, the great, great depression. depression you know well of a sort yeah but yeah, it's like the environment doesn't exist to create an entity like Boogie. We asked you to watch the whale, not the Boogie, Doc. Mola Metal Sad, also oh, High Rex. Oh yeah, we didn't even cover uh, the whale on, a, on an episode, even though we're all we very... Yeah. That was one of the best movies of the year. Mm -hmm. It was. Very good. Accommodate these restrictions, I suppose we will see. Oh, also high as Fringled and Metal. Well, that was short and sweet. Hashtag long man. Yes, I typed out the word hashtag, because we're long here. Yes, we are. Dang. That is a long way of typing uh, out hashtag, is to type it out. Uh, can we have a sex dungeon in the attic? Mm, I feel like that doesn't... Maybe. Uh... I mean... Uh, technically no, but, like, I guess generally yes. I'll allow yeah. it, but, like, you know, we, we like them to be lower level rather than in the attic. Man, feels appropriate, but... It's just a different vibe. Yeah, the attic dungeon is like, eh. You know, it's fine. Well, like I said, we'll allow it. Because we're kind gods. I showed this video to someone who doesn't use YouTube. Near the end, she asked, are they trying to make him look worse? And I was just like, that's just him. <laughs> <laughs> are they trying to oh, make man. him look worse? We're just reacting. I don't know what else to say. Uh, my current favorite... Content creators reviewing the downfall of someone I used to enjoy. We truly are in the best timeline. Hashtag get Steven on EFAP. Oh, because his name is Steven Williams, right? Yeah. Man, no no, no offense at all to anybody with these names, because it's not, not at all a problem, but it's a very generic name, isn't it, Steven Williams? Steven Williams is hype. Williams is, it, it is yeah. a very John Smith kind of name. Yeah. He's, um... Boogie is the average man. <laughs> Like, no, he's not. And you're like, okay, fair enough. Uh, my current favorite... Oh, yeah, he's like that girl from Signs, but with Mountain Dew. <coughs> what was the thing with the girl with water no, and Signs? Likes... Oh, I don't remember I that I do part. not remember at all. Was she allergic, or did she just collect them? I can't remember. It was something weird with water, and then... Oh, she's turns allergic out to water. There was, like, a thing at the end where she was like, Oh, I did it. Was That's... afraid of it? Hydrophobic? Don't remember. You're a huge science fan, aren't you, Rags? You you did a review that said everyone misunderstood it or something. Um. Oh yeah, everyone misunderstood signs. Um. It. Oh, well, really, for me to for me to say it here would sort of defeat the purpose of the. Uh, you wouldn't want to explain the, it because then intent of the artist to discover it in a natural sort of venue, mm -hmm. and you know, as he designed it. it, it requires the context that is itself to. To truly comprehend, and I would. Maybe we should wanna... check out his review of Signs after watching it and see what he says. Yeah. Let's probably got a video on it. Good old Stuckmanator. Get Stuckmanized. Play Party Animals. Hi, Az. Is that Destiny's name? Hmm. You talking about Stephen Bonnell? Stephen. Okay. I, I, okay. Okay. Steven, okay, it's not Steven You thought he Bonnell. shared a name with Boogie. <laughs> 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 Brothers in arms. 
he really would be like the anti boogie. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 uh, similarities in the opposite direction, I suppose, or something. There's a word for that, I'm sure. Inverse. Inverse. During COVID, I got my act together, built cabinetry, and moved to the other side of the world. Unless someone, unless someone rip COVID excuses are silly. To like not travel, yeah. yeah I mean, you can. Very proud of you. Not, like try to do anything, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's most like how are things in the world right now for like COVID restrictions. Where I'm at, like people have given up on COVID restrictions. Uh, oh, yeah, we get like, we that, didn't. Yeah, ages ago, things yeah. went back to normal. It's kind of funny. It's it's a lot of places you go to, there are like these dusty posters about the way you should act during COVID times, or whatever. But the it's kind of like a movie set of a. Uh, Trying to imply like uh, the old times, <laughs> the old world that has since been grown over. Like wear a mask wherever you go, and there'll be a bunch of people in front of it, just like not wearing masks. And be like, there you go. Oh, the times they are a changing. What was he saying? He built like a cabin, was it? Cabinet. I guess uh... a cabinet. Yeah, oh, a cabinet. Okay. Which okay. is impressive, yeah. though. Somewhat slightly less so, but still impressive. Well, yeah, because some, cabin. yeah. some cabins could have a cabinet in it, which, you know, at that point is more right. impressive. Yes. Yeah, because I think there I was thinking he's kind of like Henry David Thoreau or something and building like a cabin in the woods or something like that. Cabin in the Woods. The movie. No, not Cabin in the Woods. Cabin Walden. in the Woods. Walden. A, a Walden Pond. In Waldron? No, not Waldron. Walden Pond. The Pond in of Massachusetts. Madness. Michael Walden? Did I call it Pondachusetts? Massachusetts. The pond in Massachusetts. <laughs> Pondachusetts. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Up. Just gonna and me and Fring are going to allow that. The kind. Yeah. Um, well, I can't exactly reach through the internet and stop him. Well, we could, but we choose not to, because we're very powerful, well, but also I don't, very I don't have your. I don't know if I have those Lovecraftian powers or anything. Well, one day. And uh, mm. we could always pay someone to do it. And uh, <laughs> travel. We'll pay Metal to do it. Uh, yeah, they said play Party Animals, which I think that's already died down as a fad game. Which, by the way, uh, no insult to fad games. I feel like we play a lot of them anyway. But the if we're doing anything like that, we usually go with Gothic Phone. Because Gothic Phone mm -hmm. is funny as fuck. Which we need to do sometime soon-ish, I would say. Hopefully. Um, question for the panel. Do you think Boogie is happy? Hmm, probably not. No. Probably hyper-restless, so. uh, always wondering whether he can uh, make some easy change to make his life a lot better. Uh, yeah, I think he is in a state of constant wanting. He's like the, um... Ah, oh, damn, I can't remember exactly what it was, but the idea of the, the, the... Damn it, what's... It's a concept, like the fat ghost or something, but I don't know if that's quite right. But yes, I think he is in a place of constant wanting. That just feels like um, a really unfortunate circumstance, like you're the fat ghost. You're like, ugh, well, <laughs> can you I even lose weight as a concept. fat ghost? No, it's it's the idea, or I think it's the hungry ghost is the, the term. I can't remember exactly what, it, hold on, I need to, because I think that might be describing it, um... Uh, yeah, like, it's, it's a, it's a co concept in, uh, in Buddhism, yeah. The hungry ghost representing beings who are driven by intense emotional needs in an animalistic way. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't remember, I remember hearing about the concept before, but, but the point being in, in Boogie's case is that, yeah, I get the impression that he is, um, he's not contented. Because, I mean, look look at the situation he lives in, right? Like, he doesn't work a regular job. He, he doesn't have to do that much work to make an amount of money that can essentially keep him afloat. He, um, he, he, he plays video games and eats a lot of food and everything. He lives in his big house. And it's like, and yet, and yet there is still, like, this sort of overwhelming sense of want, you know? wanting things and wanting and especially the whole thing of wanting people to think that he's awesome well yeah and, and it seems to be that everyone agrees on that part of his personality and the only way he's avenue he's got for consistently making money now is making an ass of himself so how do you think that what do you think that does to his brain uh yeah like the the idea of having you know like lol cow right as a as a thing or 
getting on his knees saying, I'm sorry, Daddy Keemstar. <laughs> like, you know, that's, uh, that ain't great. So, um, yeah, I, I, I get the, but I guess, I guess maybe in the lens of like, do you think that he's unhappy in the way that he often presents? Um, which would be, I don't think that quite represents it. The whole like, oh, you know, I'm so depressed and everything. It's oh, no. Like I, a, yeah. A lot of that is for show because he knows what uh, plays well. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, because it doesn't play as well being like, I'm unhappy because I don't have everything that I could possibly ever Yeah, I don't feel that fulfilled, things. even though I'm kind of content in the sense that I can just gorge myself and not have to work very hard. If he said that, people would be like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's yeah, exactly, because at that point it's like, oh, that's just, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My eyes... I have a feeling we'll get a decent <laughs> chunk of them today. Uh, my favorite part was when he said it's boogie time and boogied all over the Mountain Dew. Oh yeah, you should also play oh, DDLC, I Dumbos. Boogied all over the Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> it's good old Morbius. Um, I'm typing with one hand now, lol. Good for you. That's a, that's a talent, alright? Don't let anyone tell you different. Free Willy? Because he's masturbating to the boogie documentary? Some people might. Alright, fair enough. Challenge mode. Um, thank you for showing us that tweet, Maula lol. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but yes. Someone said show it again. Again, not sure which one. Peak EFAP, here's money. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Very off time, my dude. Very off topic, but I'm glad for the tism is gradually entering the common parlance. Egotism. It should, <laughs> as well as Fleem. I, mm. I'm happy to know that I played a role in <laughs> making Tism part of the common parlance. Uh, I'd say it's probably one of the most important changes to the English language, if not the number one. I don't, I don't know if I'm stepping over some bounds here, but it feels like it is. Tism is the EFAP what, you don't know, burritos are to Mexicans. Like, it's, it's, a really a, it's a big part of our culture and our identity. Yeah, like, yeah, if we had a theme park, Tism World would be, like, one of the bigger sections. Tism, yeah. <laughs> Tism World. Tism, to Tism Topia. Or you can ride like on the flame coaster. <laughs> yeah. Tism Tropolis. <laughs> There'd be a whole stall just selling chickpea grumbo. And it would be funny if nobody liked it, but that they had to for the meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's chickpea grumbo. That isn't... <laughs> He's like, oh, it tastes exactly like it sounds. Of it's course. so gross, but I love it. <laughs> I, it's like a rite of passage. Like if it was a if it was a wonderful, pleasurable thing, then it wouldn't be, you know, like the the test of a, a true devotee. Yes. Because with each chickpea grumbo, you get like a ticket that gets you into the next area. Mood it's device like a very a big system. Yeah. Apparently, Arcane Season Two was announced. Anyway, my birthday's on Tuesday, and it sure will be great gift to get a Gothic phone stream soon. Rag. Oh well, I I I'm more than happy to do them. I enjoy that game a lot. It we always probably brings will. Me joy. I can't imagine why we would, and we'll set it up. And yes, Arcane Season Two, end of the year. That's what we're exciting to expect. You don't win friends with salad. True. Nah. Simpsons. A uh, little bit of advice. As a mullet, Gollum Precious Edition has a Black Friday discount on PSN and it costs $28. Should I buy? Precious Edition. I mean, $25. Bucks. It's not they worth pay, that. They should pay you to buy it. Precious Edition. I, uh, if you want to be yourself or with friends, perhaps. But it has to be, it has to be cheaper than that now, right? Like, if it's still being sold. <laughs> Which... Uh, yeah, I mean, it must be cheaper than that, surely. Maybe on that Steam, uh, well, I was about to say summer, winter sale. How embarrassing that they... You, you, you want to scrub that from your resume, you know? Lead developer <laughs> on Gollum. <laughs> well, wait, what were you working you on for the last four years? Uh, you know, my life. Like, I was just figuring out... Nothing much. You know, I went on a bit of a spiritual journey. Ooh, with Flaming Star? I don't, well, I don't know if it's anything, you know, too dramatic. Maybe it was like, I don't know, just on hiking or something. That was his name, right? The shaman? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was a shaman. Uh, he was like a, an amateur shaman or something like that. Ex well, he was professional. He got, well, he's oh, is it? Okay. All right. Yeah. Hate him. That wasn't the joke amateur. was that he made, okay, he was professional. 
I, I forgot so if he was a professional or an amateur. No, he was know. a professional shaman. Yeah, it's kind of insulting to say otherwise because he. Uh, Honestly, I, I guess I expected more from a professional. Well, when he said you know? um, existence, just on its own, I was like, yeah. "Shit, man!" That really makes you think. Oh god! Oh, now you're just reminding really me does. of Boogie, just being like, "Oh my god!" I mean, the really funny one, isn't it crazy to think something so powerful could come from the ground? It's like, <laughs> you know, like many things. Many things that we consume. On a I feel like basis. I was gonna say many doesn't even cover. It's almost like it feels like almost all things come from the ground well, somewhat. I mean, like all trees, fruit, mountains, <laughs> all food, but basically all food, gemstones, literally diamonds, the most durable substance that we have. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like well, it's it's just him, him trying to be profound, not realizing that what he said was really stupid. <laughs> it was actually like, oh. Well, well it, that's it, why that's the professional can... shaman not saying anything. So the, the professional shaman just probably nodded and said, "Yep." Mm -hmm. The fact he said something <laughs> yeah, so like totally. mind changing and powerful could come from the ground when there are several things you can easily eat from the ground in your average day that could kill you. I mean, what's uh, caused yeah, more I mean... conflict in this world than like gold and wealth, and that shit comes from the ground. Well, it just it's like Mola said. Things. I mean, how many poisonous berries and and mushrooms and shit. Is that and it's like, yeah, that's powerful. It'll kill there you. No, there ain't no boogies or there ain't no berries around Boogie. He fucking ate them all. It's, it's some... just, yeah, the idea of like, oh, how profound, you know? Oh, yeah, it comes from the earth and yet it changes your life. Oh, wow. You know, oh, like wow, the Mentos like, like, and uh, pretty much everything. <laughs> the Mentos and Coke thing. If you swallowed a hell of a lot of Mentos and then just started to take down as much Coke as possible, is it? I it, guess it shoot up. Would it, would it, could it erupt in such a way that it could do serious damage to you? I um, would imagine it would just shoot up your, uh, <laughs> shoot up your soul. I wonder if, because, um, I assume it would just come back up, right? It would, it would just, the pressure Well, for sure, just, but I was just thinking, like, could you drown from the fact that it would just non-stop foam and stuff and you wouldn't be able to, like, get a chance to breathe? That was oh. actually going to be uh, something I mentioned, oh. uh, was oh. about to mention, was, yeah. yeah, that would be my concern, is whether or not you died of suffocation. Damn, and the sad died. fact is the fact that I've just considered like someone's got to have done that, haven't they? And that means someone's probably died from it too. Well, yeah, because I, I mean, you know, you know what the thought is? It's like, oh yeah, coke and Mentos. That's some like crazy reaction. What if I swallowed it? Because that's how that's how the human brain works. What if I swallowed it? What's well, <laughs> the thing in it? One Mento and doing it. It's like I could see them like it being maybe funny, but if someone did like. 20 Mentos and then start down in a liter of Coke. It's like, I wonder if that would have terrible re uh, results. Dunno. Probably not gonna try it myself, you know? I'm just not that kind of guy. I'm not. Uh, in 1993, Mario movie would be great for Nefat movies. This proves Saren is the traitor. Is a traitor. We're probably gonna do the Mario movies back-to-back -back at some point. Not sure when. But, yeah, uh, that'd, that'd be, be fun. That'd be an interesting pair, because I hear they're so much alike. You know? Yeah, it's very similar. Uh, Mole, do you still have plans to finish your TFA series? Yes. And when it when it comes out, you're all going to be fucking blown away. Like, wow, you really, actually really did funny. it. <laughs> no. Well, no, I, I want to be honest with people. Know. Like, uh, I'm not kidding when I say there are plans to finish it. There really are. Uh, I, 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 I think a lot of people would at this point be like, you've obviously stopped it. It's like, no. <laughs> and I really haven't. I don't know what else to tell you sometimes. Like... Uh, I'd say Friggy out of everyone's gonna have the most insight into how projects on my end are uh, uh, continued, made, or come up with sort of thing, and it's just, all I can say to sum it up is, it's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> it, it, to try and yeah. explain exactly how and why everything starts, middles, and ends is, is uh, I'd rather just you guys know about the final projects, because there's no point in whining every day about all the horrors that happened. It's, it's dead, it's like, here you go, here's something, here's something, here's something. And so, yeah, it's being worked on, not necessarily right now, or even in the last few months, or even in the last few years, but maybe. Might be. Who knows? Um, okay, chat, just the obligatory magic is a great game and boogie is not reflective of all of us posts. Someone had to. Plus, Cash's a long man. Well, to be fair, he has that moment where he walks in and he like says everybody's a loner, and we were like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> which is weird, because... Like, that's just not true, Boogie. It's not 1974, and being a nerd is actually kind of like a socially outcast thing to do. It's current year. It's 2023 when he made that documentary. If anything, it's becoming arguably, some might say, too mainstream to where it's getting yes. watered down and 
harmonize. And that someone will be like, I'm a Star Wars fan. And then you're like, oh, shit. It's like, D what do you think of Kiari Mundi? And they'll be like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> was, he in, was, he in, uh, was he in Deep Space Nine? And then you're like, and you're oh. just like, yep, you sure was. You know your stuff. I gotta go. Not to say that you can't have gaps in your knowledge, just that a lot of people... The word is tourist. I think it kind of summarizes Minimum it threshold. really well. Someone who pops in yeah, just to be like, I... I like I like the vibes. I don't really care about the IP, but I like the vibes. And you're like, yep. That's sort of uh, the, the term tourist. I guess it's starting to really stick. I don't know if I like it as a term, though. I'm I sort do. of so-so on it. What do you not I like about I it? Here's my, here's my thinking, right? I'm thinking, was like, isn't, like, what is a tourist, right? Well, a tourist is someone who goes to a place, checks it out, and then leaves. Um, but the way that it's being used now is they, they come in and they stay, right? And then they try, they come in and they stay and they change that thing based off of where they're from. That doesn't sound like tourism, you know? It sounds like something different. I'm not sure how you got generally... to where you are, because the key is that they don't stay. Oh, do they not? Yeah, the whole point is that the the IP can't yeah. make money because they don't support it. They they come and then they leave. They usually do a significant amount of damage to it before they leave. Okay. Which right. um, isn't necessary uh... with, with, with tourism, but like tourism can be destructive to the areas sometimes that it runs in. A lot of locals can be really annoyed with tourism. And I think that's what it's yeah, trying to fair. evoke. Like yeah, we're all sitting there talking here, about. All they want to do is, and we just end up catering to what they have at home when the whole point is they should enjoy. Yeah, what we yeah have lots here. of lots of dumb shit happens, and then you're like, thanks, and then they all leave, and you're like, great, we'll we're still oh. here. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> thanks a lot. Then you get that meme of like the little house with everyone's partying, and some guy comes in, and says, "Can I join?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, sure, come in, woo!" And then he like smells or something, and everyone leaves the house, and then he leaves the house. And then the house is just smelly. So um, it's always fun. Representative of something. Uh, that t-shirt isn't even melting Isaac. It's the delirium boss, which he probably never reached. Lol. Oh, well, when he was like, "Oh yeah, look at me, I'm a big Binding of Isaac fan." <laughs> It's all just sad memories for him because it was all back when all he had to do was play well, games and he would get AI. merchandise and support from the surrounding communities or the people that were involved in creating them because he was that big. When you're that big, there are going to be people who, like, I mean, it'd be, if we were, like, the biggest film people ever for a decade and we had no controversies, we would have met all kinds of crazy industry people. But... You know, like, it, it, you can only we look just, back on that when you fail like yeah. and, and just be like, man. <laughs> Which, uh, on the subject of happiness and Boogie, that's one of his big problems is that he is constantly comparing himself to where he was in the past. Yeah. Constantly of like, I used to be the big, I used to be so big, not not just literally, but, you know, on a more metaphorical sense. He was the gaming guy, I, uh, and it's funny in retrospect, it's like, why the fuck was he the gaming guy? Why, why was yeah, the... he has no he has no interesting insight into video games. He just um, plays them. He makes gaming videos, and he doesn't, he doesn't have any insight. He doesn't say anything that's like, wow, what an interesting thought, you know, on video games. And don't get me um, wrong, playing them yeah. is an important part of having insight on them, but he doesn't, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um... Important question, do your cashiers sit or stand? Uh, both, uh, here. Cashiers stand, typically. It's only at Aldi that they sit, but anywhere else you go, like Woolworths, Coles, Kmart, Target, uh, Big W, uh, standing, always standing. Pretty big mix, uh, it depends. If you, uh, over here, like if you go to a grocery store, they still have some uh, human being uh, cashiers, uh, but they stand. But of course, a part of the nature is you need to reach around and slide things down, and then you know sometimes you bag them up and things of that nature. So you don't want to be you know sort of anchored. Uh, if you are a cashier at a bank, then there's going to be chairs there for them because a lot of the time oh, they are sure. you know, being yeah, pretty stationary. Yeah, that I Yeah, um, but I, I was thinking of like supermarkets and you know like shopping centers. Everybody's standing. Yeah. Always it's pretty standing much all standing at places like that, whether it's Walmart, Target, you know, Barnes. And I haven't like inspected it, it, but as far as I'm aware. In my like Tesco slash Asda, they all will go from either standing or sitting, depending on what they need to do, and they all have like a stool ready sort of thing. Oh, uh, they have, okay. um, yeah, a lot of them. There's a stool nearby for when there's just no one around, and they just need to take. Uh -huh, that off. is not the case here. There are no stools or chairs at all. It is standing the whole time. 
Well, I think that a lot of the, technically, uh, a lot of these places don't want you to maybe have them or have them around, but it's just a natural part of, like, we're human beings. I just need a place to sit for a bit or, you know, get off my feet. Uh, uh, so you have people who have the, um, like, they have the little, like, rubber pads or the little rub the cushions that they stand up, uh, they stand on, which sort of helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get for, like, your kitchen and everything, you, you know, where you stand. You know, pretty normal stuff. It's it's um, just that was definitely those, but like in any shop that you go to, there th there's no chairs. <laughs> like, if you're working in retail, you're standing. You are standing yep. until and you. And a lot go of it is break. because they do move and around. Then, um, yeah, there is a yeah. decent amount yeah. of moving about. You need to move things around. You need to maybe go out and help people with stuff. You got to grab stuff, move it here, move it there. Um, so well, and part of it as well is that if you're like serving at a checkout, standing while packing everything. Uh, it just kind of like it's e it's easier and, and better and than than if you're sitting down. Sitting down is more comfortable, but standing up is just like more effective, essentially, for like basically any given task that you'd be doing in retail. Boogie should try dressing up as Dennis Nedry. Who is that? Oh, wow. that's uh, from a uh... damn. Do you... right? It's okay. It's yes. okay. It's okay. <laughs> Take a Dennis, guess. Dennis Nedry. Is that a Simpsons character? <laughs> no. Wrong. No. Dennis Nedry. I can kind of buy it though. Like <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Nedry. Uh Breaking Bad? We have covered the movie he's from on EFAP. Yeah. Damn. It it, it, it rags. It's a movie that made you believe. Oh, you talking about Jurassic Park? You made it too yeah, obvious yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was he? Because I remember the characters, just not the names. He's the, the one fat guy. Sabotaged the oh, whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. gotcha. Yeah. From Seinfeld. You didn't Which, say I the magic word. There's an, acting, uh -huh. there's, an, there's an acting job for everybody. Well, yeah, he was on Seinfeld as a recurring character for He years. was in Space Jam. Yes, he was. He was he in was Space Jam. He was in a lot of stuff right? in the 90s. I liked I Dennis Nedry. He was in Basic that. Instinct. <laughs> Was he? Yes, he was a policeman. Rags, have you, you seen Basic Instinct? In, uh, do you I have do you not remember, seen Basic Instinct. Do you remember the joke in The Simpsons with Grouse? Willy, yeah. Willie? Yes. I told you, I did not shoot birds! <laughs> and then they all go, ah. <laughs> he, grabs, he grabs a gun and is like, I'm going to shoot you again. <laughs> you <do that. laughs> this is your final warning. <laughs> I'm surprised. I would have thought Rags would have seen Basic Instincts, but fair enough. Okay. I know of it, but I have not actually seen it. Good old gay actor Michael Douglas is in that. He's not very gay in the movie, though. No. And uh, Sharon Stone. Has. Yes. The Stoneinator is indeed in that one. Also from Total Recall. Also Catwoman. Yes. She didn't play Catwoman, but she was in Catwoman. Yes. So Boogie's naturally a soy boy, figures. Are they talking about his, uh, he's got low T or something, right? Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean... I don't know if that's a oh, repercussion yeah, of... He, that was on his list, that's what, right. Was that, was that an obesity repercussion, or was that something else? I think it, I think it can be an obesity repercussion. No, you said casually um, say obesity repercussion. I, I, think, I think it is. Well, think, uh, th that was the right. point a lot of people make with uh, the large... He, he lists the thing as if God himself has smited Boogie, when like a lot of them are just the family tree of obesity. Lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, exactly. It's like obesity generates many, 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 many health problems. Um, it's, uh, and, yeah. Because yeah. even asthma, like asthma is the kind of thing that can get better or worse depending on your lifestyle. Is it when they call it comorbidity or something? When it, you have something that just, it, it makes other things way worse? Uh, I think What's What does comorbidity so? mean? The simultaneous presence of two or more diseases or medical conditions in a patient. Uh... Kind of like how if you got if you were smoking, right, you could have like lung cancer, and you could also have um, uh, emphysema. Isn't that the one that just makes it difficult to breathe? Uh, fuck, I can't remember the. He has all of it, I think. <laughs> but yes, oh, yeah, I... yeah. Well, yeah, he, his list was huge. Um, well, when someone says like oh, I've got you know heart disease, cardiovascular issues, hypertension, hypercholesterol, and diabetes. Like you just said the same thing essentially four times in yeah, terms of why you have all those issues. 
Exactly. Yeah, and that's why, in the same way that, again, if you listen, like, lung cancer, emphysema, gangrene, well, I don't know how many smokers actually get, I think gangrene is a risk, though, from smoking. Um, you know, all the shit that they put on the, uh, on the, on the packaging. Oh, well, I don't know if they even do that in America. Is that something they do in America, where they put, like, Dude, pictures over of- over here, the shit they have to put on smoking stuff is, is insane. Um, oh, well, it sounds like, like, it's probably, it's probably normal. Right yeah. yeah, it might be normal, but it's like it it's nuts the amount of stuff that the warnings and things. You oh, I know well. at the at the come and go where I get my gas and snacks and whatnot, behind right above, there's a big sign right above all the cigarettes that basically says smoking kills more people than car crashes, suicide, alcoholism, cardio, whatever. Like it lists this massive list of things about how deadly smoking is and how it kills you so much. And it's just like this big sign right on top of all the cigarettes, and it's oh, you know, and it's are, on the packets. Okay. And everything. That does sound because what we have here is that you can't see them. That any any cigarettes have to be like behind mm-hmm. doors, like a cabinet, so you can't see them. And oh, even okay, because here start, it's not the it's not that way here. I figured they America be, would be oh, well, chiller than Britain and Australia. The thing is, even when you open it up, it's plain packaging, um, plain packaging that has pictures of like whatever crazy illnesses and shit yeah, and the graphic. Yeah, graphic images of, like, people's throats filled with, like, pus and stuff, or, like, getting surgery, or gangrenous, like, limbs and everything like mm-hmm. that, and also way more expensive as well. Um, wow. So, yeah, it's yeah, a, that's, uh, yeah, it's a step further. Smoking than, uh, is, uh, smoking's not good for you. Here, they just have, you know, the big, bright, you know, obvious labels that say, this shit is terrible and it will kill you, it kills so many people, goodness, it's so deadly. And then you look at those those uh, ads from the fifties. Doctors recommend smoking a pack of Yeah, nine out of ten doctors <laughs> recommend. You know? Didn't like almost all the Marlboro men die of like cancer or something like that? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't I think know, they but did. I, all I know is that smoking has been murdered at this point. Yeah. Oh, pretty much. Yeah. It's it's uh. Well, oh, I mean, you can still find it. Still do it though. Yeah, yeah. You can still find it, but like. like but... It's just, I feel like, especially uh, our three sort of age ranges, we went from seeing it being hyper proliferated to almost been completely sequestered to like. Oh, it was. Well, here it was time it in because we had a we had something that it was it was like a it was a bus that would come around to school where they would just talk to you essentially about smoking. smoking. Jeez. No, no, it's like it's a bus that would come around and they had like a cartoon mascot and it was all about like. The dangers of alcohol and smoking and drug abuse like and everything Dare like that. Over there, do you know Dare? Uh, I've not heard of that, but maybe it's similar. It's, it's basically just an education thing of smoking's bad. Yeah, you, know, you think bad like, and... drugs are terrible, and you know, yeah, the smoking yeah. It was like bad. um, it's it was weird. like that South Park joke where the guy's butt out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give that cigarette butt a throw, butt out. Whoa, whoa, smoking's got to go. Do you remember <laughs> um? Stand. <laughs> community episode where they like accidentally make drugs cool because they're so bad at oh yeah that's right because pierce <laughs> it ain't a party without drugs <laughs> and, then, and then the little kid's like i love you drugs <laughs> and then it chag was, um, comes out it, and he's like i'm drugs like no you're not he's like yes i am i'm the, the you truth think i was gonna be fun forever <laughs> I control your life. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about They'll it. Like, Let's kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I will oh, say it is a mistake that they always. Uh, it was. It was never a, an effective tactic when they when they when they told you the lie that smoking didn't make you look cool when it always <laughs> did. <laughs> smoking does make you look cool. That it was is. always smoking, a lie. Smoking is very That's cinematic. The, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta yeah, find a way around that. Like, that one well, is just like, yeah, that's not. St- just tell tell us how the terrible ways it will kill yeah, us. It's, it's it's pretty funny because the South Park episode on smoking is um way more complicated in terms of its its uh the stance essentially on smoking compared to a you know obviously a lot of the media that was kind of parroting. But I mean, even in that, they started smoking because they didn't want to be lame like the people who were doing that, and then like. They started vomiting up like goo and everything <laughs> from having smokes. Like it was a miserable experience. They're coughing their way through the whole thing. But then Rob Reiner, he was there and he was made of goo. Yeah, because uh, uh, when I was growing up, there was a bus I had to get. Um, it was on a particular street that absolutely stank of smoke in the worst way possible. And everyone there was smoking. You had to wait. And I just remember always associating really badly with like, fuck, smoke makes everything 
smell and taste and be horrible. My uh, grandmother's whole house was just yellow. All the walls were yellow. All the statues she had uh, were kind of neat, but oh, they're all yeah. yellow. Um, I was just like, have you seen hell. the pictures of people who take off like the, the the photos and the pictures from the walls after a smoker's been living there for ages? It's just big and white you can see sort the of outline. Yeah, yeah, you can see the I outline have not of seen the that. tree. That's fascinating. Well, yeah, and I, I wonder um, if I I kind of lucked out with these experiences in terms of just being completely put off smoking from really early on. Well, it, it wasn't it wasn't the packages smoke, and it wasn't people telling me it was really. bad. It was the Seeing like my you know loved ones' houses just fucking decaying, uh, which is kind of um, metaphorical, and, uh, isn't yeah. it? I never really I... had anyone in our family. I can't. I can't think of anyone in our family who smoked. So I never saw a relative smoking, which was you know very good for me that that wasn't there. Um, my dad used to do tobacco years ago. He used to do oh, tobacco. like chewing tobacco. Yeah, chewing tobacco. And he one day decided. I asked him how he how he finally got off of it. You know what did he do to get off to the chewing tobacco? And he said, well, I just kind of decided this is really bad for me and I don't want to use it anymore. So I took the pack that was in my uh, pocket. I threw it in the trash can and I just I just quit. And it was tough and it sucked. But I mean, I, <laughs> that's how I got over it. And I was like, all right. One of the, uh, the ads I've seen it. lately yeah. is you save money. They're, they're like, oh, you know, after oh, five yeah. years, pack a day smoker saves like $30,000. <laughs> It's nuts because a pack yeah. of cigarettes is like six bucks. Oh, six bucks! Wow, a pack of cigarettes here would be like thirty bucks. Thirty? Yeah, it'd be really expensive. God damn. Well, remember I mean, Australia still, used monopoly money, so. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but like, if you're spending six USD a day on feeding an addiction, right? God damn! Mm. Like, Just lose, well, lose. Yeah, let me pull out my little calculator modulator here. I mean. Let's say just say let's say six and be conservative after taxes. Well, it means six, about eighteen hundred, you know, forty two bucks a week, two thousand dollars a year. Times fifty two, yeah, twenty two hundred bucks a year, and that's if you're just on one pack a day. A lot of people First are off, on more than that. Just can we and 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 not just the monetary cost of twenty two hundred bucks a year on just feeding an addiction, but the time that it takes to smoke a pack a day. That's got to take you a couple hours. Uh, to, to go through a pack of cigarettes, right? I guess it depends well, I mean, on the person, well but sure. Things, though, right? I guess it does. I like. I'm so out of the loop on smoking. I have no idea. how Yeah, because it, it there's not a set time, right? Cigarette. Some people you get those memes of it as well. Where you just, how fucking hard you suck it on it uh, could burn it faster, so to speak. I recall when I was working at a at a hotel here downtown. Um, there was in the the loading dock behind the hotel, down below by the you know the road back there. Um, was the pathetic little smoking balcony area where it was just like this wooden platform by uh, by the by these brick walls down below where the loading trucks show up and the garbage you know gets collected and there would be people down there if I would leave or come to work there'd be people out there all the time smoking even if it was 15 degrees and you know windy and miserable or rainy and everything and they'd be out there smoking and i was like damn i'm so glad i don't smoke the money and the misery well, to just if you're gonna have an addiction that shit in your system. make it a gaming one okay <laughs> I mean, yeah, just give me, like yeah give me a compulsion like why can't i be addicted to i don't know there's so many there's got to be way better things to be addicted to that like at least give you something something that makes you feel amazing well, at least you're getting. I suppose smoking does when you get super addicted to it, but that's kind of the I deal, isn't so, it? They're taking but... sort of sanity and satisfaction away from you to begin with, and then they give it back the more you smoke. So, but you never feel like I've never seen someone smoking and they they seem happy. No, <laughs> you know they just seem like neutral, except in like, like movies. This is their life now. Yeah, where they take a big drag off of a cigarette and they're like, ah. Oh. I'm like, it's, and then I, you find I out just, that that actor like hates smoking, and that they, <laughs> they're like, I can't fucking even near it after my uh, role is complete or whatever. Because yeah, you can get like fake cigarettes and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vapes—they're the cool new thing now. Though I hear they're not good for you either. So. Oh yeah, turns out vape turn turns out that putting shit into your lungs that isn't good clean air is generally pretty bad for you. Your body's um, like stupid. But... Not to extend it too far, but to you guys, because um, I was on the tail end of it. 
By the way, don't feel talkative, smokers and vapors. You know, it's, it's all the same. No, we love you and you're wonderful people. Like, uh, we'd say the same for alcohol, even with... though we drink it. We'd be like, don't be getting into that, you know, yeah, too much don't... and stuff. Yeah, don't. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, this ain't, this ain't something like, quit. oh, yeah, filthy smoker thing. No, right? no. It's like, no, 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 no. No, it's filthy, it's... but you're not filthy <laughs> as a person. Just <laughs> the inside of your lungs and your throat and all the mucus and cancer you know giving awfulness that you're putting into yourself is that you should quit smoking please please quit smoking because we want to have you around for a long time hell yeah it gets mm. you the cancer you can't, you can't give us super chats if you're dead so please quit smoking. you can't watch us review rebel moon part two if you're dead that's <laughs> so. right you're right. not gonna you have to be alive for rings of power season five so you gotta make it there you know <laughs> you can't let amazon win and die before that um, but I, I guess on a, a, a lighter note, that doesn't have to do with mortality. A lighter um, note? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it? Uh, oh, Come on, Rags, you're like the king oh, of it. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. A lighter. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, because the smoke is very light, that's why it rises, yeah. Um, uh, so. You fucking the, with me? What's that happening? Friggin' help. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, like you use a lighter to light your cigarette. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank goodness. A, yeah, you can't yeah. tell, though. You have to, like, switch What brand the... are your lighters? Well, I you already know I got the Zippo one. Yeah, we get Zippo ones, too. The cheap ones, yeah. Zippo, I feel like they're... They feel like a Texas Instruments kind of company where they make graphing calculators f for kids in school, and they also make anti-tank javelin missiles so what? you know they kind of got everything you know sort of covered there you know texas instruments they do it all but for the fourth fifth time before i get sidetracked i was on the tail end of this and i still remember it do you guys remember the smoking section in restaurants yes Ooh, yeah. that sucked <laughs> again um, uh, this all died in our like sort of lifespan it's kind of yeah. interesting like I said, we're on the tail end of this stuff. We remember it, but no one else. Like, that's the thing that's just dead, and it, it probably is never coming you back. You spot them in movies every once in a while. Depends yeah, on what movie you're watching, you I guess. don't know, all you young whippersnappers, it used to be when you walked into a restaurant, the uh, person at the front, they'd get you your menus, ask how many, and then they'd ask you a very important question, smoking or non-smoking? Because there were two sections of that restaurant, uh, one for smokers who could smoke in the restaurant, in a section for people who didn't smoke. And that was life. That's actually so. something um, that annoys me about certain period films where they have like nobody smoking because of new rules. And it's like, no, everyone's fucking smoking. <laughs> like, you they gotta have come loads up with of it. They bullshit cigarettes, is what they really yeah. need to do. Well, even then, they have rules against that, right? Like, Disney aren't allowed to oh, portray any kind of smoking. Yeah, Disney, I, don't, I think Disney has like a blanket rule for no smoking. So uh, when you see Wolverine. Oh, but we'll show ain't... slavery and murder. Is well, it's just Wolverine, he ain't going to be smoking any cigars, all right? Uh... That's not going to be happening. Because he's, I mean, you know, he doesn't give a shit. Isn't that a joke in one of the X Men movies, Smoking Will Kill You or whatever? Yeah, I vaguely recall that. Man, you know. I that, think I told you. Yeah, that's, but yeah, they're like like two people are about to maybe die or something, and so one of them lights up a cigarette, and the other says, "Hey, you know that thing's gonna kill you. you know, those things kill you, right?" And they have like a laugh before they, the ship explodes or it hits the planet or you know their 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 bombs go off and they save the world, that kind of thing. You know, it's a good joke. It, it's a good joke. Oh, I think actually someone says it too. One of the vampires in Buffy as well. That, that stuff will kill you. When in Buffy law, oh, it's in Buffy law. All law vampires are already dead, so it doesn't matter. But. Memes. I was gonna say as well. I don't know why this came to mind. Sort of. I guess it's on a it's kind of similarish track in some ways. If you go nice and abstract. But uh, you know, I said I'd watched um, Days of Future Past again recently, Fringy. Mm -hmm. Um, something that just annoyed me because I, I like a lot in that film, but I think it annoyed me at the time too because it's just such a meta line. But uh, you know, Wolverine's gone back in time and he doesn't have his metal claws anymore because he's taken the mind of his self before he was captured by a. Uh, or not even captured, volunteered for the Weapon X yeah, program. Yeah, Weapon X. Um, and so he has to use his bone claws. And like when they collect Magneto, who has no fucking clue who Wolverine is, nor would he have any reason to. He's got no context. And like he goes to grab a newspaper, and Wolverine uh, yeah. puts his bone claws out and stops him. And then like they have a back and forth. But as he's leaving, I think uh, Magneto says, "Imagine those are made of metal." 
It's like yeah, why why would you why would you say that? Like why why what? imagine if they were made of metal. <laughs> it's like and because maybe Magneto is like cuz then I would be able to control you. Yeah, but that body? that applies to everybody about everything. Like imagine you were made of metal, I would control you. Aha. Uh -huh. I suppose that's it's right. Like... Imagine you picked up the metal cube in Super Smash Bros and I could control everything with It's you um do. it's such a line of just like you already said that cuz he's Wolverine and he does like normally have the Shut up. Um, it's, it's lines like that can annoy me, even though uh, on no, that why, viewing... You couldn't have said something like, uh, you know, are those bones and not very stylish, are they? Or something like that. Well, the fact is, they don't even... Strange. Look. What that movie proves, which is 100% true, is Wolverine's no match for Magneto whether or not he's got a fucking adamantium skeleton. Doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. Magneto's telekinesis for metal is really It's insane. Good. He... He annihilates him in their one-on-one, -on -one, and it's not even close. And and I mean, so, it scales yeah. with creativity, like telekinesis power should. And it's so that's rare actually... that we get villains who can use telekinesis in interesting ways. You're so right. That's why Mage Hand is one of the best cantrips in D and D and Pathfinder, just to be able to kind of use that creatively to do all kinds of different stuff is like amazing. Some that was one of my big problems with some of the the X Men stuff is you have powers that are like oh that's really cool and then they use the most basic you way you could possibly imagine the power You're like right okay and Magneto is one of those it, um, the fight scene in Dark Phoenix is um, one that gets to have a bit of fun with Magneto on the train. Yeah. yeah on the train that one was cool but most for the most part he does a lot of showy like big events like oh wow he lifted something that's really big as opposed Gate to Bridge. Yeah, all the stadium in um, Days yeah. of Future Past. But you, you, what you want to see is like more things that make you kind of go like, oh shit, yeah, you could do that, of course. Yeah, imagine things that are just like sort of heavy for us that he could do without any issue whatsoever to add a bit of like relatability to it. Yeah. Um, like, like he, he could just carry around a grocery cart, like when he goes grocery shopping. He'd have a cart just to keep all the items together, but he could just carry it around with him. Reminds me of Blink. In, I guess he could roll it on the wheels. In Days of Future Past, where she's got portals, and throughout the whole movie, it's mainly just portal to get someone from A to B to A to B. But there's one point in the film where they use a portal to send the Colossus up, and then use a portal when he's about to hit the ground and fire him into someone with the momentum he gained. It's like the most clever thing they've ever done with a power. And I was like, man, I, I wish we could see more of that. the beginning of that, there was the portal chick, right? And she uses the portals in really interesting ways that's what i'm talking about blink okay i'm just making sure because it's been ages since i've seen that yeah, yeah i mean the, like, the oh, most interesting really thing cool. i think she does near the beginning is she uses a portal when a laser is about to be fired at her and she, she uses it to fire the laser back like with another portal it, it, she deserved to be in more stuff just because of how cool her power was that's so cool yeah it's like i said it scales with creativity as as you get used to that power there's so many things you could do with portals thinking with portals yeah. Anyway, my favorite bad movie is Phantom Menace. Love that film. Such a big part of my childhood. Fair enough. It's not a bad pick for best, like, or your favorite bad movie. Because that mm -hmm. movie sucks. It's shit. <laughs> but I could see why, like, why people could like it, you know? It's got this weird, earnest goof to it. Well, also, nothing, like, nothing makes sense. It's no but secret from us. We like the prequels, but... It. Yeah, we like the prequels. I I legitimately like the pod racing. Like that's cool. Pod racing is pretty good. Like, the fight scene at the end is pretty good. Um, I, like I I hate to evoke the you know bringing things back, but it would be really cool to get an to get a, a well done pod race sequence. You know, it would be really nice to see that. Because I think if Disney, one, and it was really cool. If Disney for any reason had a pod race action, we would all immediately be like, oh my god, digging up Phantom Menace to try and, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, it's just like a shame because any earnest attempt to make it very good would be met with that. But that's the thing. Any any way of getting back now, you have to claw your way up from hell. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's how it goes. That's what they've forced themselves into. A fun thing to do is sneak up behind someone, get close to their ear, and quietly say, Ray, like Kylo. Why? <laughs> A do? really fun thing to do that's even more fun than that. And this is you need a few friends for this one. So get a get a couple of your very good friends. Very your very good friends. And then pick someone that you all know and throughout the day have them randomly just lean in and whisper things like, You need to wake up. This is a dream. None of this is real. 
and then just carry on as if nothing happened. And if you can get like four people, four or five people to say that within a day, you could really get them to freak you know, out. You know what's funny? Question. I actually think I'd buy it more if it was one as opposed to many. Because if it was many, I'd be like, you're all fucking with me. I, you've made the little pact to all say the stupid lines. <laughs> and I feel like if you had a group of them and you said that, one of them would smile. And you'd be like, see, I know. They gotta be. They gotta be good. They gotta be good. He's gotta be good friends who don't laugh at such silly things. Yeah, you gotta you gotta play that or role. Very serious. Or this like randomly in con just randomly in conversation, just say that in the middle of a sentence and then just carry on as if nothing happened whatsoever. That one would be better if you could get everybody along for the the so everyone's having a very normal conversation. Then someone says, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" You've got to wake up. Looks directly at them and then carries on the conversation as if nothing was missed and they all yeah, do it too. Yeah, no one mentions. Yeah, nobody else maybe says anything. They're just as if nothing happened. Yeah. I mean, that is downright, if you get that right, that's just a scary movie in a moment. Uh, in a film, sorry, right? Oh, yeah. like, scary, <laughs> scary movie in a moment. English. Uh, hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I was wondering who your guys' favorite Hello. South Park character is. Mine is probably Randy. I don't know enough about South Park to really say. I haven't seen that much of it, unfortunately. This is a question we've answered before. Uh, we usually settle on a trilogy of, or triumvirate, or whatever the word is, of mm -hmm. Eric Cartman, Randy, and Butters. and Butters. Usually it's those three. They generate some of the funniest and craziest scenarios that are very entertaining. <laughs> um, so yeah, it would be between them, and all three of them have amazing episodes, so... Uh, gun to my head, it might be Randy. Um, I'm not sure. This, this mm -hmm. really is tough. It'd probably be Cartman if it was gun to my head. Would it be bad if Stonefish went extinct? Oh, it's Stonefish, isn't that like I the... Mean, isn't that probably. the one that if you step on it, it shoots a bunch of, like, poison into you? Oh. I think so. Um... Yeah, I th I think so, because even though the stings can be fatal and they could hurt humans, I don't want that to be the criteria for making an animal extinct, because that's a lot of critters. A lot of critters out there in the world, they just don't like humans and they will bite yeah. us or sting us if we get close to them. But I don't want to just remove them from the world, um, mm -hmm. especially nowadays. Like if if we were... If we were surrounded by flesh-eating uh, radioactive coyotes and we were like cavemen surviving in the post-apocalypse and you asked me that about them, I'd be like, you know, I'd, I'd say there's a, you know, there's something to be said about maybe making those extinct, right? If they're an actual survival concern. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I, I don't think, I bet very few people die from stonefish. It's like spiders and stuff like that. We have antitoxins and modern medicine, and I wouldn't want to condemn a whole species for us accidentally stepping on them on occasion. Hello, what Massive. What do you think? I, 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 well, when they said, would it be bad, I thought they meant, like, ecologically, and I have no idea. I mean, it very well might be. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's another element of it. Yeah, true. Like, they might serve an important function in, a, in an environment that we don't consider our own, but is obviously very important to them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, got a movie recommendation for you. Better off dead. The writers, I suspect, of being on meth. Lol. Anyone keep up with a good work? Any who keep up with a good work? Better, Better off, off dead. dead. Don't know that one. It's a meth movie, apparently. Oh. A Fringolius Maximus Dingo Dangus. Oh, hi. Have First you seen ever seen a stonefish in person? They're terrifyingly potent. No, never seen one. Is this a different super chat? There's two stone fit. Is this the same guy who's really curious about our position? On I think stonefish? it's the same guy. Yeah, I see the one person asking about it and was like, hmm. You could get some inspiration about, stonefish about the stonefish. Yeah. About it. yeah, maybe there's something. Maybe there's like the Venn diagram of stonefish enthusiasts and EFAP, you know, audience members is maybe, maybe, it's, it's, maybe it's not even two circles. It's just one circle. Uh, so who knows? Maybe there's just something that we do. Maybe we've got some. You know, who know, who knows? You know, fish people, they're, they're a weird bunch. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas here to advertise my band Panic. Where'd the dicks go? No, panic, nothing. where'd the, right. like, is that like a play on words? Like, yes. Panic at the disco? 
be saying panic where'd the dicks go All right. All these years, I never put two and two together that Hopper oriented his hands to imitate a T-Rex. I always thought it was just him being quirky. Hopper, the villain of Bugs Life? Or Hopper in Stranger Things? Hmm. I'm trying to think, because it's the Boogie Docs. I don't know Hopper. how Hopper came up. Well. Yeah, uh... like, I, I got nothing. I have no idea. And right. unlike Hopper, I don't know if Boogie... I think there are only two animals in the world that can't jump. Elephant, <laughs> elephants, and Boogie, 29.88. So, something to think about. Can hippos jump? I know they run along the bottom of uh, the Yeah, jumping the in the water. Yeah, so, I don't know if that counts. I've, I, I don't know if that should count. Because jumping in the water is way easier, either. right? So, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a... Yeah, I don't know about that one. Can a slug jump? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you seen the slugs jump? Have no. you not gone to... <laughs> you not... I don't know. I guess not. I just heard it was animals. Maybe, maybe it's like animals with legs. Of all the animals with legs, only the elephant cannot jump. Oh, seems unfair. <laughs> they disqualified because they don't have legs. They disqualify slugs. <laughs> slugs just... <laughs> If you're a slug the, and you can... The ambassador for oh, slugs yeah. is like, I don't feel like this, even if we don't have a chance, we should be entered into the competition. <laughs> yeah, give us... Yeah, we're the slugs, matter of man. respect. Give us, give us something. Let us have this. We're slugs. Jeez. Uh, this is what it looks like when you're so used to attention and no longer have anything of value to show. Oh, well, that's, that's all it's been, is just trying to find new ways of uh, being in the spotlight. And uh, the Lol Cow podcast would be the answer to that for now. We'll have to see how it all turns out. Scott Pilgrim pulled a He-Man. Oh, I, yeah. Me and Vringy heard about this. We watched the first episode. We weren't that impressed. Um, yeah. But the 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 show itself, it's not about Scott for a decent portion of it. Like he's gone, right? Yeah, like out. it's kind of an alternate like telling of the story that's more about Ramona. Which, uh, well, imagine my fucking shot. You just gotta be careful doing something like that, especially marketing it as a well, Scott I Pilgrim think, uh, thing. Yeah, like, I think that the read on it was, oh, it's like a direct sort of comic adapt like adaptation of the graphic novel in the same style rather than, a, like, an alternate story. Yeah, a lot of people were very not happy with that. I saw fighting over it, but I also haven't seen anything else about that show, so. No, I didn't see much about it either. Uh, Tatooine? What is that? Like, Halloween, but for tattoos? Yeah, sure. Hmm. Why not? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't know what's worse, Boogie or Nick Cardo Avocado, two horror shows of humans. Hmm. Probably Boogie. Boogie's exceptionally bad. Yeah, like, Nick Cardo is, is just... Nick Cardo is just, just cringe and sad and pathetic, but Boogie <laughs> seems to be an actually terrible person. Well, so. the problem with Nick Cardo is that he's, um, all the worst clips of him, people aren't sure if he's legitimately playing a character or not, because in interviews he's much more chill. Like, uh, and some of it you're like, of course that's a character. Like, some of it is so, uh, ridiculous and stupid on purpose, which is kind of funny to watch, I guess, but, you, you know, like, Boogie, on the other hand... When he says uh, all the stupid shit in that interview, and then he's like, I, I was doing uh, Andy Kaufman. It's like, uh huh. And then everyone's just sort of waiting. <laughs> yeah, well, in, in any case, like, Nick Accardo, I don't think he's ever said something like, I was just doing a character. He's just constantly messing around. And then the, the time people like him the most is when he's, like, you know, gone to visit someone else for an in, in house interview. And he speaks, like, sort of normally and chilly, and people are like, well, this guy? And then you look at his old videos, and he's perfectly normal. And so you're like, oh, I get it. Which, you know, whatever. He's, if, if you want to play a crazy clown man, for it'll get you views and everything, so I get it. The, the thing with Nick Carter, though, is everyone's like, can you be careful, though? You look like you're killing yourself, which, kind of. Yeah, like, I, like I, if I, look, if I had kids, first off, they're probably not going to get on the internet until they get to a particular age, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd want him watching, like... <laughs> when Nick Agato's like, children, do not, do not search for me on the internet. <laughs> not until I'm dead. Uh, I've seen a video of a wombat and a kangaroo being BFFs. Oh, 
that sounds great. <laughs> you should make a TV show. <laughs> yeah, they they would be a good pair, a wombat and a kangaroo. Uh, I want the Zelda movie to be animated, not live action. I don't think Link's hat could do good in real life. Yeah. Well. Everyone wants it to be animated, not live yeah. action. I have no fucking clue why they're making it live action. Because they're like, well, they're people, you know, vaguely. Like well, Mario you know, and Luigi. Like maybe, people. I don't know, maybe it they're less how cartoony. they feel about they're not Italians as or Mario something. Or something. Luigi, well, it depends so, on which you know, Zelda you go for, around. I guess, right? Because Wind Waker is pretty cartoony. Wind Waker is very cartoony, yeah. but I guess in the more Same of with the, the Four yeah. Swords, yeah. But again, what, I don't I don't understand why it's not an animated film. It should be. That'd be that'd be. Well, even from... Uh, cynical uh, wisdom of like, gotta have your live action. Blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, I mean, I don't know. Marriage did amazingly well. I don't know. I feel like there's no exactly. reason. People are used to it being a video <sighs> game character. They're used to it having a style and a set of especially, graphics. Yeah, especially with the very, uh, like, trying to emulate paintings uh, style that they have for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which are the most successful Zelda games in terms of sales. You know, like Zelda's more popular than it's ever been, and its its interpretation is easily translatable to an animated film because it is animated in the game. So yes. I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't. But at the I same time, I, I do because they're probably like, well, yeah, it, you know, they're elf people, but they are like just you know people. So just have it be with real actors. Get celebrity actors in there. You know, well, <laughs> celebrity actors. Uh, yeah, and and uh, talented writers too. Bonjour, Mubes. Is there any good chance of a nofap of Coen Brothers' Country for Old Men when there's less men? It would not only be it would it would not be an <laughs> old fap for the century, uh, for the country. Sorry. Okay, so if if you're out there thinking, you know, they're probably going to do that Long Kong thing eventually because the Long Kong man has been Long Konging for actual years, mm. then. You're gonna have like if you were like I know I'll do it for No Country for Old Men. You understand this is just the beginning. You'd have to put in several years to catch up with the Long Kong Man. So that man's insane. If for any reason he would get a Long Kong episode, you you guys to to do the same thing. It's just you're replicating madness and uh, strength here. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. If you think you're up to the challenge, you go right ahead. Just be, just understand what you're getting into. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, we highly encourage it. We're just letting you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a revolver ocelot duck, not a Krauser duck. Oh. Oh, okay. Fair enough. My friend and I finished Buffy today. Only Angel Season 5 to go. We love Buffy and we love an Angel. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. You've got the best season of both shows left. So enjoy. Mm -hmm. He does seem that far out of shape. Six solid months in the gym would, uh, with a good diet, and he'd probably be okay. Is he any worse than you were, As? Yes, As As didn't get as bad as Boogie. Um, the, th th that's actually more true than a lot of people might even imagine. The, the weight that he's at, Boogie, you have to basically do like incredibly little exercise and eat like shit to like maintain it. They talk about this on different programs they have about I, I, it. I couldn't do it. I, I just don't, I couldn't eat you that have to, much and move so little. To I couldn't an extent, eat that much food. Rags, you I have like to be vomit. mentally unwell somewhat like <laughs> for this shit to happen. It's, uh, well, thank you. So yeah, you're, you're doing pretty well. Uh, you, 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 the, the nature of maintaining that kind of mass while living your average human life is actually like somewhat difficult, I guess. You have to be in a yeah, particularly like, bad place. You would have to be consuming a, a lot of food and not moving at all. Which, I mean, I, I don't know if this is, uh, like a lot of people, I assume us three have it, but you get an urge every once in a while to be like, I need to, I need to move. I'm, I've been not moving yeah, too exactly, long. Yeah, exactly. I am, I, I absolutely get that itch when I haven't gone outside for a while or just something, you don't even think to do it. You just suddenly realize, oh shit, I've been kind of like cooped up in here and I haven't really gone out. I need to go out and like walk or do something, you know, stretch my legs, move around. It's um, it's insane nonsense and doesn't even it would never happen. But if only you could just temporarily switch out the that that one drive in like an anorexic person or an obese person, just switch them out for like a year, and then switch them back, and <laughs> they both be like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" Uh, oi, where can I find the feet pics? I, we, For who? We, I, I don't know. They just said the feet pics. So. 
I my feed pics are on my channel. Uh, I I plenty of my uh my avatars have my my little posy boys on them. I don't know what they're called. I don't know if the cutesy name is for them. I don't think about them much. I guess I just take them for granted. But uh, there maybe you should get with the guy who constantly talks about She Hulk's feet, and maybe you guys could. I think that guy just got or... defeated by time. He couldn't keep it up. <laughs> he couldn't do it, or maybe he got exactly what it is. That you asked for. Oh yeah, his adventure well, I ended. I hope he did. I hope he. I, I hope that he his character arc. <laughs> he got the know, ring to Mordor. He really did it. Like <laughs> something is definitely afoot. Uh will this be a Vaj? Sure use... Yes. Well, I mean, I'm sure that he could. You know, he he'd be grateful to have a friend in tow. So I I, see. I knew good. when you were interrupting me. I was you like, know? he's because he's got a pun. He's got to get the pun out. <sighs> Are you done with the pun? No. Well, I was going to say that uh, it just warms my soul that he was able to get the feet picks that he has always been looking for. Well, it sends that long. I was expecting two, but there's only the one in there. Well, I mean, you know, you want to space them out, you know. But yes, it'll be a VOD. Like always, they're all VODify, the EFAB episodes. Soon after, too. Back in the day, it used to take like as much as three or four days to get them back up because... Uh, I wasn't recording them locally, and for some reason, like, processing on videos that were sometimes as much as 10 hours would take fucking ages. And the worst part is sometimes you upload them, they process the standard definition, and then they didn't process in HD, and you re-upload them, and then they do. So that would happen every once in a while. But these days, because I record them locally and the processing on YouTube is much faster, sometimes you can get them the following day, which for some reason, uh, sorry, for some people, they might watch the episode live, go to sleep, wake up, and it's already there. On the old moolah. Sounds like a sounds like a series of some really hard steps there to get a YouTube video. Out Could write a fucking days. book on the trauma that YouTube provides its creators. Uh, if in like fifty years from now it's still around, I can't imagine how much easier everything is. But simultaneously, how much less freedom there is. I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, especially if you watch like Red Letter Media's videos. Uh, they're so careful to censor things that they just flat out didn't use to censor. Oh, yeah. Because now, you know, you say one word, and maybe it's a word that just gets your whole fucking video demonetized because you said fart or butt or something like that, and you just... Well, you one know, thing I thought of is, like, ridiculous. if it meant complete demonetization, if you use uh, fuck at all, would we, would we outright stop? It's like, oh, that's a tough one. I mean... If it was for my videos, I would stop using it because there are creative alternatives that you could use to get around it, you know? Well, there are creative alternatives um, to almost everything. It's just the, like, sure, yeah, that but feels I, like a step too far to me. I know what you mean, but I would not say the word in my videos if I knew it would get me demonetized. I would come up with alternatives or. You well, know, what's funny is there are words that we. Uh, basic sort of like wisdom would would say don't use them, but that we still do when we think it's a good joke, and that I keep in. So I'm just sort of like, well, if it happens, it happens. All I'm hoping is that we never well, get a a channel wide demonetization for using these words. That's all. Well, it's virtually indistinguishable from randomness. So like, yes. at what point are you risking it? As if it's almost like, well, I mean, in a way, you don't feel bad letting the words in because, as far as you know, it's all just like it's all nonsense anyway. True. If YouTube just came out and said, "Here are the rules. Don't say. Here's the list of words you don't say." I would just be like, "Well, thanks for at least telling us, Jesus Christ. At least now we know, and we won't say those words, or we know which words to do." Well, whatever. some of the, some of provided these words after the ten in that way, but then they also like sort of just lie, or rather, the some people. I, I assume you've seen it, but some people are like, "I have no idea what got me dinged this time. And they won't tell me," or that you have included the things that are not allowed, and you are monetized. This so was like. Mm. Yeah, I know. Like okay. I said, it's indistinguishable from randomness a lot of the time. So you're like, what do you want me to do? I guess the bots have to be better refined, which I'm sure will create nothing. A lot of money but... on bots that do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Except annoy people. Uh, why do I share the same town as this massive? It's okay. There can be massives in your town. Doesn't make your town a massive oh, town. Oh, in Fayetteville, it's a nice town. Uh, you could do some corn with Kim Star. What? Do some corn. Maybe, maybe not corn, but something else that rhymes, rhymes with corn. Oh. Where people are generally unclothed 
Is that the whole feet picks thing that was being asked about earlier? Is that is that to do with this? Maybe. I th if you're not wearing clothes, then you're. I suppose you would see someone's feet in that instance. I suppose so. There's something to that, maybe. Um. Recommend McJugger Nuggets series in 2016 with Boog. All right. Uh, what does Rags have against lepers? Just want heels. <laughs> so, uh, in the D and D campaign that I'm playing with. Dev, Arch, V, and Sargon on Arch's channel. Um, I think it's just called Arch. Let me double check just to make sure. Uh, I think he had to rename it a while back. Yes, Arch. At Arch YouTube on YouTube. Um, every Thursday, uh, starting at EFAP time, actually, uh, we do our Dungeons & Dragons game. And on the first fucking episode, um, I'm playing a paladin... And Sargon, because he's a very, very good dungeon master, um, we, we had a crowd of people who had gathered in front of us after I had decided to heal someone with my Lay on Hands ability in front of a church. And so a big crowd of people had come up wanting to be healed by this ability, and they were getting to be really rowdy, and they really, really wanted to like reach out and touch my character and get healed. And uh, because there were so many people and because they wanted to get in so close, Sargon wanted me to do a strength check so that I would be able to get through the crowd. And I rolled a natural 20. I, I rolled a 20. Green number and everything. And Sargon's uh, interesting interpretation of what that meant was that I pushed the leper down in my attempt to get away from the crowd. I pushed this leper down, and he hit his head on the pavement and died from that. <laughs> so... um. So that's kind of a lingering joke that I that I that I you hate killed uh, the lepers, lepers and I Damn. and I kill lepers. So that's kind of been sticking around. Whenever I do something, some will comment on, "Wow, he hates bandits just as much as he hates lepers and things of that nature." But yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, sometimes what a what a what a meme. What sometimes a meme. the truth just meme. pops uh, out like that. Sometimes uh, that's the yeah yeah that's uh, where the cookie crumbles. That's one way to interpret the dice. Uh... Uh, hi, Moller and friends. I'm traumatized from seeing Boogie naked and will never be the same again. Thank you for the stream. No problem. Uh, I am. Uh, I don't. I think I'm just kind of numb to a lot of it. You know. I think I'm just numb to a lot of stuff like that. I feel like I've. Uh, well, so what's funny? That's certainly what. If yeah. you roll the clock really far back, he would do this anyway in his videos, getting like fully naked or close to it. But what he would do is like tone tone it so that it's like I'm doing this to show you like this is this is the horror you need to avoid. This is the life you do not want to live, and that is very serious. And you know, normally I wouldn't do something so embarrassing if not for the fact that I'm trying to let people know like this is the life that you can live. And and you understand now with all this information, like no, you didn't. You did it because you like getting naked on camera. You're fucking like that. That's like his, he, he finds any and all excuses to do it. The Twitch thing was the newest one. Yeah. Um, why? Why is it that when Mike Clum comes to your house to record you for a documentary, you immediately want to show him your meat like, aprons? Yeah. Here's my meat apron and the why? thing underneath it. You here's the thing I hate it. showing people and never yeah, show. Yeah. I don't I want anyone to see this. Yes, here it is, documented for all time. It's a lie. <laughs> he likes showing that shit. It's uh, I don't He's know. A weasley big liar. Yeah. Dude. Really a little loud. So far, this has my vote for funniest EFAP since 250. Still some time to go before 300, but an auspicious start to be sure. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was definitely uh, an EFAP for the ages. Like I said, everybody will be like, gross EFAP, horrible, never want to see it again, and yet it'll be voted as like their favorite of the year. You, you yeah, just, just wait for it. To be honest, the... Be. Crispy chicken at McDonald's these days sucks balls. Back in the day, it was halfway decent. Hi, Rags. Hi. I think just in general, McDonald's food used to be just better. And now I keep hearing things is there about any, how expensive it's gotten. Is there any take on, like, a fast food chain that's gotten better over time? I... That would be... That's an interesting question to ask, especially for members of our audience who are um, wiser than we are. But... I, I don't think I could really answer that because I, 
I've never been someone who had a it's lot just, of fast food. For so. me, I always hear like it's just the, that's that's much worse than it used to be, much worse. And it's like, and and to be fair, I'm I'm someone who's kind of in the same camp. I'm like, I don't know if I know of any fast food restaurant where I've been like, oh wow, they got so much better. I mean, there are good ones. There are ones that I like, and I bet there's a bunch of stories of them. Uh, there's a guy that I watch every once in a while, and not to forgive me, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he would do stories about how like chains, fast food chains and businesses kind of rise and fall and sometimes rise again, what they do to improve the quality mm -hmm. of the food, the menu items and stuff like that. So if I remembered any of those particular stories, I would have said, but I'm sure there's examples. That's the thing. It's just not really my wheelhouse, so to speak. Yeah. But there's got to be examples, you know, companies that don't do well and then they have to sort of either reinvent themselves or focus on quality, overcome their bad image, that kind of thing. Five out of the seven oversized caskets I found are sold out currently from Trusted Casket. America. Trusted Casket? I guess that's just like coffins, right? Like they, they, they sold out of the huge imagine. ones. Oh, well, close to selling out of the huge ones, but. High quality cheap caskets for sale. That's cheap caskets for sale. Yeah. What, can um, you, is it like legal? Can you just not have a casket? Can you put someone in like a potato bag? <laughs> you have to do that. Or just... I, as I assume if you want to go into the ground raw, uh, you probably can. I mean, it's there. There might be rules to keep away, like to make sure that raw bodies don't. Why do I keep calling it that? Um, but to to make sure that they don't like attract scavengers or like animals or anything, yeah. depending on location, especially if it's in like a a, a cemetery where there are uh, a number of cadavers. But I don't know. That's actually a good question. It, I but that sounds like the kind of thing that would vary greatly based off of where you are. Because I, I have to like imagine me, there's going to be families in the I world that are like, don't don't waste money on a coffin, just throw me in. I don't give a fuck. That, the, uh, that attitude yeah, probably exists. I, I would want to do that because I don't want to like separate myself from the earth, you know. Because you know, Boogie would <laughs> that reminds me of the thing Boogie said about this thing that comes to the ground. But I wouldn't want to be separated from, like, I'm dead. I'm gone. I'm just. I'm not here anymore. Like all of the nutrients and stuff that could go into the ground to grow the trees and the grass and stuff. Like it's anything. Like I don't need it anymore. Um. Like, I'm, I'm an organ donor, all that stuff, you know? Just, I, I don't need a casket. I don't need to... Why? So it'll just sit there and my bones will turn to dust as the years go by? And no, like, it's, let me return to the earth, you know? The circle of life. Oh, you know, like in that movie, cool. 2019's The Lion King. That's right, 2019's The Lion King, starring uh, James Oliver, is that his name? I think so. John yeah. Oliver. That's the one. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah really, John really Oliver good. is yeah, he's very talent, talented he's voice actor. He's British, just like Rowan Atkinson. That's so right. That British people are all the character. same, aren't they, Mahler? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. No real difference. That's why uh, British comedy has only gotten the same. It's always been just as good. It's never gotten worse or anything. Uh, reliable. All right, yeah, well. Uh, uh, no casket for me. Just let me return to the earth. Hi, Rags. Careful with that strength Hello. of yours. Don't want to do too well and knock Mola to the ground. Now I know that oh, reference. Oh my goodness. You, you know it's a reference now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And if it wasn't for uh, for Sargon's bizarre interpretation of what numbers mean, we wouldn't have that <laughs> meme. So we have, see? Silver linings. Uh, Should have bought a belt for the fight. Oh, well, yeah, Boogie. I mean, well, I guess he figured he didn't need one because... <laughs> I don't think you they know. make them in his size. Yeah, I was gonna say, do they make, do they they, make belts that long? They'd be like, "What would be the point of a belt?" <laughs> it's, not, it's not how it works. Yeah, uh, but guys, his foot—it got smooshed. Wesker died from that. Yeah, it, it can have. It's really, it could be really lethal that's getting a foot smooshing. True, Wesker died as a foot smooshing. <laughs> you know, that's old now. That video, in a way, but the we knew about the foot like, smooshing yesterday. We knew about the foot smooshing for a whole year before everyone else could join in on it, you know? We, we, were, we were thinking and, uh, about the was, foot smooshing. It was great because it was like rediscovering an old friend who oh, had yeah. lost, you know? What a crazy way to get him out of the show, to finally end his character, was he got his foot smooshed like that in a door, and then he just <laughs> died off screen, yeah. I guess? <laughs> Fucking Wesker. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> 
Oh, pulled WS out of today. Can't believe the door came down and it smooshed his foot, and that was that. One to think. Wesker was no more. The Hallow memes for for the coming Halloween is is they're all in our heads, but we can't release that forbidden knowledge until Halloween itself. That's right. And a lot of it and will be allegedly we've given away what it is many many times. Many times. So, now, despite that, we're still not going to confirm or deny anything. But no. that's just what people are saying. Well, what will happen really is it it'll everything. get announced, and then someone will be like, "I knew it," and then all the people who had predicted wrongly will be like, "Yeah, I knew it as well." Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one I predicted. There is a correct answer. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, it's, it's not too difficult to figure out, especially when we give you the amount of uh, episodes, quote, so to speak, that there are of a series of a same IP. You understand there's not many that could reach uh, certain numbers, but I'm not going to repeat whatever that number was because I've forgotten how <laughs> many the, exactly. Too. But that's okay because it leaves more of a mystery. All we'll confirm is it is indeed horror, and they were films, all right? And boy, so. they were so scary. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Rags, I'm spooky. calling you out. What? I know you're not you really. You or the? It's the it's the, the super, super chatter. chatter. Yeah. Oh uh, my goodness. Oh I know my goodness. you're not really a good boy. You've been lying to yourself what? and your fans. You're the goodest boy, I Rags. Oh my goodness, that's such a kind thing for you to say. Thank what you. What a very roller coaster. Much. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Thanks very much. I, oh. I do appreciate that. <laughs> and then following up, sorry as I super chat before I saw how big he is. It's like, yeah, as as did not get into Bookie's size. <laughs> um, well, you know, no just... matter what you say about as, you could uh he ain't boogie. No. He ain't boogie on the inside, that's for sure. God no. Just a reference, I'm traveling I'm a traveling programmer making six figures as base, and I have a per diem of sixty-four dollars a day. I couldn't be I couldn't be that fat of a fuck if you paid me, and I'm literally encouraged to be a fat lard. Are you? Uh Are you I guess they mean do because that? you, you do a lot of sitting. I paid a lot of money to work that you do when sitting on a computer. Well, not on a computer. I guess you can obviously. stand while working on a computer if you want to. Uh yeah, suppose people get standing desks. They do. They do. Oh, Some yeah, people have I've the ones that turn. Things about those. Yeah. The ones that can rise and fall, right, for standing and sitting. Yeah, I've heard decent things about them, and I will never use them because I what like sitting on my ass. Well, well, don't knock it, it till you a try lot of it. it right? on, well, for me, like the idea of manipulating like a keyboard and mouse while standing doesn't seem ergonomic for the arms, but I imagine plenty of things would. Uh, what are they called? Veridesks? But maybe they, I, I they no slant idea. in a certain way to where it's more comfortable. I could see myself uh, enjoying one of those. Especially just for the the mind. tech side of it being like... And I'm like, oh, I'm in the future. Like, I'm living in the future. Yeah. I wouldn't mind trying it. It sounds like it would be interesting, because I've had jobs where I'm on my feet all day. You know, I've been a server in a busy restaurant and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind. You know? Done a lot of walking. I'm beginning to suspect this guy isn't a professional. I don't know if they mean boogie, because professional what? Professional <laughs> loser. Wow. Oh. Woo, get fucked. Boogie eating shrooms, the power of the earth in the palm of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the, power, the power of dirt in the palm of my hand. <laughs> boogie is the chicken There's movie guy. Bob marinated in Mountain Dew. Oh, no. <laughs> he evolved. Oh, my goodness. Oh my gosh, it's like Snoke. Oh, it like in the little out test that tube. He was like a little test tube guy, but it was actually <laughs> the, the true villain all along. And then movie the lightning, Bob. Yeah, the lightning strike reveals Movie Bob scene. <laughs> that I makes was... Movie Bob even more of a villain that he created Boogie. Yeah, it was like a test. Well, Lauren, this I, one checks out. I just pictured it more so like Pokemon, where it's it's the the gross chicken in the oven with the Mountain Dew, and it's like da 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 da, and eventually just turns. He's like da 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 da, da, da and you get boogie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 do, 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 do you want to rename your boogie? <laughs> I'd like to rename your boogie, and you just F A T F U C K. <laughs> and he just, and it's in all caps, like most of the And then Pokemon in the next, in the next battle, it's like, oh, trainer, whatever has challenged you to a battle. Go, fat fuck. 
and like you, all your moves are like related to manipulation. No, it's in like a huge. Yes, all the ball. yeah, exactly. It's a all ball of the size of like a beanbag chair. So like you have sub story gaslight. Like yeah, like it, gaslight. You use yeah, all of them, but like gaslight, all of them yeah. just result in, but it failed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not effective. It hurt itself in its confusion. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. yeah, big. And then it's and then it's like, like defense down, you know, yeah. attack down. <laughs> Wait up. <laughs> Wait. It's like Harden from Metapod, but instead of the defense rising, it's the weight. <laughs> Boogie used eat. You can't carry any more than him as a Pokemon because <laughs> he's too heavy. Even in Pokeball form. Oh well, yeah, like I said, he's gotta he's gotta have a big old Pokeball, a big old one that you just have to roll around with you. When you can't have any other Pokemon, like you open your menu and it's just one big Pokeball. But hey, you know what? He gets so fat you can't even kill him. So I mean, what Pokemon wants to be on a team with him? You know? Is that how he wins? Like every other Pokemon runs out of moves and they just sort of die of old age. I think they just <laughs> like stare at him like awkwardly and stuff, and they don't really know what to do. They stare into and the abyss like, until it stares this back a, at them. This is just a That's loser right. person. <laughs> it's, uh, good old... Uh, man, I can't wait for Boogie to be like, you know, I just read Nietzsche. Well, <laughs> he I wouldn't pronounce it, it I properly. Just, I, saw, I saw... Well, no, he'd see... Oh, yeah, Nietzsche. <laughs> hey, look, right, well, I've Nietzsche. said Nietzsche. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, I don't blame Fringy. I'd, I'd say it... I'd probably say it ten different ways ten different times. I just can't remember. I, I've right. definitely said Nietzsche, so I won't be too hard on that compared to, like, Albert Camus's. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. It's, uh... I, I can't wait for him to be like, oh, yeah, I just read Nietzsche. And, you know, did, he said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, you know? And I've been thinking about how profound that thought is. By the way, this is coming from someone who... I like Nietzsche a lot. <laughs> but, like, I... It's just, like, I like the stoic stuff, but it's just when Boogie talks about it like it's a profound idea because he's looking for his next grip. It just frustrates me. Of like yeah. Boogie Dock 2, it'll happen. Yeah, where he's He like, probably will do that with Mike Clum as well because he'll be like, look, well, yeah, we can just do it again. But, but what philosophy yeah, a is he going to discover in that one? Is it going to be Buddhism or something or is he going to is he going <sighs> to be like, you know what I've realized is hmm. that suffering comes from attachment. You know, I've just realized this as a 50-year-old man. <laughs> Like, I just don't get it. You I just gotta keep realizing stuff, can... otherwise it'll get boring. Well, well it is just funny, because, I mean, it was the thing he did when he did his shroom trip, is he, he, he talked about it like it changed his life. Um, it, you saw it in the documentary, and he also made a video on it. It's like, and yet nothing changed. Because it's not that, because maybe, that, maybe that's, like, the lesson that he, well, I know that he's not really looking for it, but maybe that's kind of the awkward lesson of like, yeah, life is not like this one moment that changes everything. It's a lot of very small moments and mundane if, days and decisions over the course of years that kind of change who you are. Have you ever made that video where you actually said like, I realize now that realizing things is something that I do to ignore the reality that I'll never change. I'll constantly talk about changing in order to you know, convince myself it might someday happen, but it doesn't. If you ever made that video, he would probably, it would be one that begins with him, there's no nobody in the seat, and then he walks along and sits down, and, and then does it. Not size, not size. Not size, no, we got, because the size is, is too memed at this point, but the turning the camera on and starting the video a little early, that one is still pretty popular. Even in the good yeah, videos, right. that one still turns out. Oh yeah, kind of like how the dog, it, you can't have a dog with you anymore. Yeah, the dog's That's too bad. much now. Um, yeah, if it's a cat, then you'd probably be better ooh, off. Oh, that actually. goes back to the CSGO scandal, doesn't it, right? Yeah, it's even further back than that. Yeah. Yeah, T right. Martin he opened the video with his dog. It was really funny, though. They got away with it. They got away with it. They did. They got away with it. It'd be funnier if someone opened with like a mole rat, you know? <laughs> like they just had a mole rat. They're like, hey, buddy. Oh, oh God. Really the, dude, the day video. someone has apology video, they just go, yeah, I really fucked up. I'm going to try not to do that in the future. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it would also like a... it would also end with that sort of vibe too, where you would stare at the camera for a little while. Oh, where he lean, yeah, and he leans over and then turns it off, you know, and then the camera shakes as he turns it off because he leaves that in. I don't know. It's just, it's I mean, just... the ground would shake as he. It's called it. authenticity. It, really, it, it, it is. It is kind of fascinating because whether it's earnest or not, like the idea of oh, well, I can just discover this new ideology that fixes my life is um. It's just a fascinating kind of thought process of, oh, I just found out about stoicism. There we go. My life is now improved because I'm aware of a concept. 
as opposed to actually putting it into action. Because that's just, a, it's, it's just, he really is a path of least resistance guy. Like, what he really wants is a lifestyle where he can have a bunch of money without doing much work, and he can eat and play video games and wank. That's, like, basically what he wants. <laughs> I mean, all it's, the it's, proverbs it's, in the world don't mean shit if you don't actually do anything. You have to like, do something. Like, knowing the proverbs yeah. doesn't mean anything. You have to actually exactly. do the proverb. Or else it's worthless. Yeah. Exactly. It's uh, it, it's, it's about like quoting the wisdom action. of you know ancient scholars and writers and wise men is like no that shit means well, anything if you don't actually. Yeah, live exactly. It, live you, it. you can you can you can be like you, the you can quote the any thing. given philosophy or any Mark Twain quote or anything, or you know a Teddy Roosevelt quotes and everything. And it's like that's cool, but like you have to do shit. Yeah, you can't just expect the quote isn't the thing. Oh wait, what if I wanted to convince people I'd changed but hadn't actually though? Oh well then. Oh well. well then, whoa, whoa, again, it's 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 like if he lost weight, that would be like the most convincing thing. Yes, it do. literally would. Yes, him losing weight would be a physical demanifestation of the like the problems of his psyche and his personality. If he, um, committing to do this one thing. If he'd lost weight but changed absolutely nothing about his personality, which almost isn't even possible, but let's just pretend for a second. That if he did. Confusing. Um, it would still convince a shit ton of people that this is a different boogie now. Something's happened, yeah. Something oh, yeah. happened. Uh, something has to have happened because that's a massive change to make. And 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 it's like you said, it's kind of absurd to say that he wouldn't be different because he'd necessarily be different. His his routines would be different. And then of course there'd be the physiological effect as well of you know you exercise releases uh releases like serotonin. Um. And 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 like the the diet and everything. I mean, it's it's just the, it's just true, right? Like depression tracks with uh, obesity. Yeah, you know, I went to school with her in a grade school. Huh? Sarah, I went to school with her. She's really nice. She's hot. Wait, what? Sarah. I. Wait, I I'm I am so lost. What? <laughs> you, you said her name, Sarah Tonin. We oh. went to school together. Oh, I see. It's a it's a meme. Okay. We were buddies. We but rags. Yeah. The I, sentence oh, wouldn't have matched the nature of a human name at all. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Hence my confusion. I said it releases I, I serotonin. Just... Exercise. Oh, it's good that she's serotonin. free. I don't want her trapped. So what, what does that mean? I don't want is her it the idea that you need to get forever. somebody to run? Somebody has to run, and then it releases the cage yeah. in which serotonin. Listen. The idea of Sarah she chases trapped them. inside of Boogie's brain for eternity until he exercises is like that's a horrible, <laughs> terrible fate. All right. What? So she has, to, she has to go on an adventure through him to like try and motivate him by using whatever is available inside of his mind to get him to actually run. Boogie, jog, please, just a little bit. <laughs> Free me, release me. You're my only hope. Oh, that's like that movie. Yeah. Oh, Jurassic yeah. Park. It's that movie. Yeah. It's uh, Dennis Nedry. Yeah. Wars episode. Oh yeah, and that too. Oh yeah. EFAP is the only thing in my life that brings me joy. Also, high rags. <laughs> so, the beginning of a legendary. Yeah, that's, that's a great. <laughs> What's so funny is uh, up, but it always makes me smile. <laughs> I've highlighted this before, but people use that meme so early. The people hadn't even watched the episode, and so uh, the unlisted I version. Was, was <laughs> there was a top comment that was like, "You've had so many joy in my life from uh, the upload," and then there was people being like, "Dude, no offense, that's kind of sad. Like, the, you should be more to your life than just Efap." <laughs> they were getting more. They were getting what Boogie was wanting to get: the sympathy of strangers on the internet. <laughs> uh, the best thing is um, that he inadvertently created the Efap. The FNT I was on after that, uh, unlisted. One of them said that FNT is the only joy in my life, and someone else was just like, "Listen, I like FNT as much as the next guy, but I think that you might have a problem if it's the only joy." <laughs> 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 we gotta let the memes spread, apparently. But it's so hot off the presses, people feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Mountain Dew rhymes with liquid poo for a reason. <laughs> Mountain Dew's not like that liquid bad. poo. Mountain, Mountain Dew's fine. Mountain Dew's fine. Well, it was just... the thing of, uh, remember, it was in the South Park episode when they went uh, zip lining. Cartman kept drinking. He was drinking Mountain Dew, then he was drinking like Double Dew, then Diet Double Dew, and that was making him have <laughs> diet, diet Double Dew. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, they used to put that on your. Uh, they they used to put that on the Mountain Dew uh, bottles. They used to say Dooby Dooby Doo. Wasn't it Do the Dew? 
they also had that. Mountain they had a, such they had a variety. Drink, isn't it? It's you have to have it with Doritos like... when you play Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, I was um, I was actually in the EFAP Discord in last night, just chatting with people late at night, and the subject, as it often does, uh, came up of Shadow the Hedgehog, <laughs> and someone was asking. We all know that uh, Sonic's favorite food is like chili dogs, right? But what yeah. is Shadow's favorite food? So uh, I looked it up, and you guys will enjoy this. Darkness. Uh, favorite food. Yeah, so well, well, here is a list of Shadow's favorite foods. He likes pizza, okay, Doritos, hot pockets, and Snickers. Hmm. Okay, interesting. No Mountain Dew. I figured Dew. he'd like eating a bowl of gloss or something so that he Damn. can feel the pain of, you know, it's it's inflict the pain on himself that is in his soul or something. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. But I'm glad that he's eating pizza and he's stuff. He's old school of, edgy, know. which is like he's he's like teen he's, edgy. He's funny he's not, edgy. Is yeah, what he's he funny is. edgy. He's not like depressing, <laughs> annoying edgy. Because it, it's funny, someone would be like, "Wow, Frig, it sounds like you hate Shadow the Hedgehog." It's like, not really. I, I kind of no, like him. He's, <laughs> he's funny. He's he's brought me way more he's, joy um, than Sonic has. <laughs> I'm oddly enough, so. he, his Shadow would be like, I mean, "You might be shocked by the decals on my fucking PC, but hey, that's just me." And it's just like flames, and you're like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, that's who I am. You know, yeah. And, and, Sh that's and Shadow, true. yeah, flames. Like, uh, yeah. He listens to um. Revenge. Like you know, heavy metal, but not death Lincoln metal Park. or anything. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he. I like Lincoln Park, right? But he listens fine, to Lincoln Park. Fine. He listens to Lincoln Park for sure. His favorite prequel movie is Revenge. Of, well, of his favorite. That's everyone's prequel favorite movie prequel probably. movie. What do you mean? Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> that's the correct you know, answer. Gotta, we gotta weed weed out the false positives. You know, this is the his favorite process. Avengers movie is Infinity War. I mean. Well, damn, guys. Which, which is a bad, bad which news. is a bad choice for. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning some things about ourselves that I didn't. Well, that maybe like. we have a little bit too much in common with Shadow the Hedgehog. Maybe or maybe we shadow. need to have more in common with him because maybe ultimately... there's a little shadow in our hearts. Yeah, yeah. Maybe each of us. There's a little shadow in each of us. Ah, Mountain Dew drink. I don't know if the, the super chat wanted us to drink Mountain Dew, but I mean, I'm alright. I'm good. I don't know. Yeah, Mountain Dew is far from my favorite soft drink. It's yeah, it's far from it. Um, I like I it, like, but I mean, I like, yeah, it's fine. You know, I'll drink a Mountain Dew, no problem. If I'm at a party or whatever, and there's Mountain Dew, it's like I'll drink it, no problem. I don't mind Mountain Dew; it's nice. But, but I'm like, I would, I would Coke ask the question if it was the only Coke. drink available. I would ask them like, what, what's the deal? Why? I yeah, like why casually, I'd say. Uh, well, they made a deal with Cobb or something, right? <laughs> like anything else to drink. And like, nah, no, nah, this is all we got. It's like, oh, all right, no, but yeah, sure. So, I mean, that is that is like art, that picture of Jeff Keighley sitting there next to Master Chief and all the Mountain Dew and Doritos with this like oh, yeah. blank expression. <laughs> talking That's about, talking, so which, by the way, talking, ago, talking about tough. games journalism, by the way. In that yeah, clip, yeah. It, the irony is... It's not even irony, it's just, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, yes, we need more great games journalists. Uh, anyway, it was the Mountain Dew, Doritos. The of the time. It really was. <laughs> like, and it stuck, yeah. too. It still oh, yeah. just, it still has it. It's hilarious. It's games hilarious. keep getting reset on their respectability by this stupid shit. <laughs> We're gonna get there, though, because games is just a juggernaut. Mm-hmm. To put in context, netting seven k dollars per month is basically a one hundred twenty nine dollar per year k dollar per year uh, gross pay. This guy can't live unless he makes over six figures. Apparently, yeah, this Which guy is can't absurd. live he lives unless in Arkansas. he makes. It's what that's one percent of income, and in, like if you're making. If you're making over like $125,000 a year, you are in like the top 1%. That's why when anyone yeah, digs uh, into any of it, it doesn't make any sense. Or, or if you're not top 1%, you're quite close. You are certainly in the top 5% of earners. And especially like Rag said in fucking Arkansas. Holy shit. You know? I, like, I live there. No, know. it's just that Arkansas has one of the uh, lowest. Uh, yeah, it GDPs is. It's really cheap to live here. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just it's not really an expensive cheap. place to live. If he's struggling, then that this the it's all a him problem. Seven thousand dollars to live. Uh, seven thousand dollars per. Uh, wait, was it? It was per. Was it per? It was per month, right? Or was it per week? 
Well, that was what the problem. Some of those, month, some right? of those things didn't make sense. But wasn't one of them we were trying to figure out how could it be per month with one of the costs? Oh, one of them was like a yearly it was cost. Like, it was that Hulu was like a hundred and fifty dollars a month or some shit. Right. It was seventy or eighty bucks. So we like, assumed it must have been yearly. Bucks. Well, it's just the numbers didn't make much sense uh, in terms of trying to add it up. Uh, and then there was like, because of the fact that I think he's still got car payments and shit. Uh, obviously, he's got his mortgage. He's just really good at managing his money. You gotta buy a new car, yeah. you know? You, you, you know what buy, I always say? This is a really good Final financial Fantasy. strategy. Is, you know, buying new cars, it's really great financial advice. Because, well, boy, that, car, that car like will appreciate yeah. like a bottle of fine yeah, wine, trust as me. As soon as it rolls off the ramp, it appreciates It practically by, oh, doubles wait, in value. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, or is it the other way around? A part of me is convinced that people who just, like, buy new cars are actually retarded. Well, but the thing I'd... is, you can buy new cars and you got the money, but, I mean, if, you, if you're struggling, it's like, you get a used car that will last you for a while for the a average... lot cheaper. I think uh, my dad and I were talking something along the lines of this, um, and he said the average car payment in the United States is like six hundred dollars, something like that, like six hundred fifty bucks a month Holy for a new car, shit. which is like that's insane to me. The idea of, or I can't imagine buying a new car. Like even if I got a shit ton of money, I just I wouldn't buy a new car. It's not. I, I just don't give a shit. Right. But the idea uh, of buying a car that's new and paying that much money on it for that much time, just because it's new, is it, it's wild to me. Well, I, I mean, it, it's either that or you pay for it outright, but not many people do that. Not many people or you buy, buy a used uh, car. Or you can buy a used car for less. Um, Way less. Not, fina not financial advice and whatever, mm -hmm. you know, but, but think about it, all right? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think <laughs> saying you, you can buy, buy a used car for less money is complicated advice. It's not fine. <laughs> well, all right, okay, I'm just Take saying. Take it from me. But, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, especially I just, yeah, with, like, cool. buying, and then there was a whole stunt of him doing the Tesla that was, like, $100,000. Um, yeah, that was and really it's still silly. up in the air as to whether or not he got it or signed on it or anything. It's like, he, I know uh, what he says, spending, but he's boogie. I don't fucking trust anything. Spending $100,000 on it. A hundred thousand dollars on a car when you haven't paid off your house is insane. Like, you you would have to think long and hard about spending a hundred thousand dollars on a car. I would I would expect someone like that to be either a car enthusiast or very wealthy. I just um, can't even imagine the idea of spending a hundred grand can, on a new if car. If you really like cars, like if you if you're really into cars, and there's, it would, there's some, car it wouldn't be a nice. new car. It'd have to be like a, a a beautiful classic car or a car with. Like a particular significance to you, like maybe this was like oh like like maybe if you grew up and like my first car was a whatever it was, so buying a new like an old sure. one that's been restored and runs perfectly, and just because yeah, it's yeah. rare, it was really expensive. I can understand that, or a a really nice classic muscle car, something like well, that. I mean, like I I can understand it, somebody buying like a really nice you know BMW or something, a really nice uh, Audi. Um, you know, I can imagine that. It's just that if you haven't paid off your house, you're probably not in a position to be spending as much as you could put on a down payment well, for another house on a you car. Said you said you're, you're like, you're, um, like qualifier for that was if you're a car person. And I think a lot of the people who buy new cars aren't car people. They just feel almost as a sense of, like like a weird obligation of something you just do or something that people just do, or they do it as like a status symbol to show people, look what I drive. I drive an infinity, you know, I drive an infinity SUV, or I drive a big Audi or a big BMW, and it's insanely expensive. But they get it to look like they're wealthy or look uh, like they're. There, there's certainly that as a conversation about the kind of spending habits that people have to keep up appearances of being. In a good position Status when they're actually saddled with a shit ton of debt. There's certainly that. Because, I mean, you know, depending on what kind of car you buy, you've got the cost of the car itself, then you've got the cost of, like, how fuel efficient is that car? Does that car make sense depending on where you live? You know, like, do you need a four-wheel drive if you live in, like, a dense suburban area? Or, like, you know, city or anything like that? And then costs of upkeep? Certainly, like, if you buy a car that's from Europe, it's like, well, yeah, then that's going to be more expensive to import um import anything that you might need for repairs or services or anything like that all these costs just kind of add up and then there is kind of the thing of i don't know i think sometimes people get like nervous about used cars because they're worried about what could be wrong with them but 
you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, you know, it might not be as reliable. Is, yeah, but like, how much does that when you're paying work? a tenth of the price on a car <laughs> that you know only has like you know sometimes eighty, a hundred, twenty thousand miles on it, and you give it the look over and everything looks a okay and it's swell, and and, and if you're still nervous, uh, but, but you'll that would pay be ten times of, uh, that kind of money on a new car. I'm like, I feel like you're kind of being a slave to your paranoia at that point. Well, I'd say maybe the thing that would address that is that uh, there should have been, like, classes in school for understanding cars, you know? Yeah, I just, mean, you know, people like for some me, basic it was, knowledge for important things. For me, it's just, it's just something my, you know, you just, you just sort of pick up looking at cars and, you know, you got parents that'll say, you know, if something's wrong with the car, they might say, hey, th this is what's wrong with the car, and he opens it up and he... You know, shows you this is you know, your dad shows you the inside of a car, and he, you know, yeah. But sometimes, the cars... the thing is, sometimes people don't even change their oil. Like people, people will just not do anything with their car. There are people who will do that. Like that, their car yeah, just but takes even... absolute beating because they don't do anything to to make they don't sure do the basic updated. stuff. Because I've never yeah. changed my car's oil, but I don't actually drive it that much. But it's but I I know if something like I look I can look inside and see if something's broken. I know that if it starts making a weird ass noise, I should take it to the shop. I know mm -hmm. that you know that like the really basic shit like that. I feel like a yeah, lot of people just don't just do. Thing. Sometimes people will just have all of the fucking red lights popping on and they don't do anything Still or they don't runs. take it to get mm -hmm. serviced or anything. Which I remember it was a it was a thing where it was like I can't remember what it was, but it was like DSP talking about some car that he had and like how he'd never taken it in to get like serviced in years. I I can't remember the context of it. It's like yeah, people just like don't people just I don't know. Don't it's weird. Yeah, take care of their cars. Whenever um, you go to Jiffy Lube or Heineke or Pet Boys, wherever you take your car to get serviced, they pretty much always they'll put a sticker on your windshield up on the top, a little one that says come back at either Good this cars. date wow. or uh, come back at either this date or at this mileage. So Brand that you know that every once in a while. So. The computer, they have it like a pop-up on screen, like you got to get a service in 30 days. Oh That's yeah, and a lot of a lot of new, new cars. cars are full of yeah. gadgets and doodads and screens right. and, and screens. automatic this and automatic that. And it's like, it's more shit to fucking break. Uh, you, well, uh, yeah, I mean, god damn. I, I remember good old nostalgic for non-automatic just wind up your windows, but that's not something on any car at this point. Uh, yeah, Roll like they'd up, have to you know? make the... There's probably like the cheapest models of some things, but that might just be technology that's so... I don't think standard there's and any cheap now. new car that you can get that's not going to have electric, uh, like for, for, yeah, the, for windows, the windows. Yeah, I think that um, it, it used to be that way with air conditioning, where when that was because there was a time where that was a, an advertised feature of vehicles. Oh was, yeah, you can Which get I... the model with air conditioning in them. And nowadays, the idea of having a car that didn't have air conditioning is like absurd. Uh, yes, so that yeah, is that's strange. But I don't want, like, I, I don't want a screen on my car on the, I just don't want that. I mean, some things are nice, like, I mean, the heated seats are, you know, neat. And, but, like, at one point, there's just, like, I don't want, I don't need an automatic tailgate. Well, yeah, I was about to, what I don't want to lose is automatic. Uh, what I don't want to lose is manual transmission. I like manual. Yes, I hope manual I like transmission manual. stays forever. Unless... There's some terrible injury. I will always drive a manual transmission car. I like manual. I feels like it manual. keeps my mind active. You know, it feels like you're in, driving, like you're in control of the vehicle, that you're actively participating in driving it. It's 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 a more it, it more of an engagement with the vehicle. Yes, I feel itself. more connected with the car. Yeah, like unironically, it's like it's yeah. my noble steed. You know, I like <laughs> that control. Sorry, like you can't that. join in on this conversation, Mola. <laughs> What? Sorry, what? Well, you d you don't drive, so <laughs> it's not a conversation that you could exactly jump into. On this you know one. the um, you know the difference between manual and automatic transmission, right? I've seen movies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that's why I figured you did. I listen. I love that you guys love cars. I'm playing Tetris and I'm waiting. It's oh, okay. Oh, that's great. We I, love that you love Tetris. I Thank I you. like cars. I wouldn't say that I love cars. I'm not, I like I'm not cars. I appreciate proper. them. I'm not like a car guy. I like I, the aesthetic of cars. That's for sure. Like yeah, I mean, the art and the cool. aesthetic, and I I have a yeah. great appreciation for the mechanics that go into a car and. You know the freedom. It's it can a cool represent. invention. It's it's a cool it's it's a cool thing that we made. Well, we I, I say we that people made. Yeah.
Agreed. Love me some Garth. If this was a fictional short story, would the character of Boogie be written too ridiculous? Um, well, no. I mean, <laughs> you do wonder the, the, about the that whale sometime. is a film. Like, it's just the the character in that film is much more endearing. So yeah, maybe that's Boogie the missing is... element of Boogie that makes him ridiculous. It's like, is, is there nothing the to like about this person? Is basically, he's a Boogie shitty, a shitty whale. whale. <laughs> he's the whale that I don't want to see redeemed at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mola Doc, I spent nine eons with the long man, this is the footage, and then 45 minutes of tentacles schlopping and disembodied screams. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you know, me and Mike could make art, I'm sure. YouTube is sued for slandering Mountain Dew. I mean, he's he's kind of is like an anti-ad for Mountain Dew, isn't he? In a way, yeah, you're right. I wonder, what a, what a crazy world it would be. If a company could sue you for ruining their image by associating <laughs> yourself with their brand, if Mountain Dew sued Boogie and said, listen, this is a cease and desist order from purchasing our products. You're not allowed to do it. You're damaging our brand. And <laughs> That's probably like a thing in cyberpunk or whatever settings, <laughs> like the dystopian. It would be a joke you'd want to do. Like, like they contact him, and he's like, finally, I can, like, get an official sponsorship. And they're like, please stop using our drinks in your videos. Please. The boogie's like, pay me, and I will. <laughs> pay, <laughs> pay me, and I'll stop. <laughs> pay me, and I'll drink Coke instead. Ooh, interesting. Some corporate sabotage yeah. by a boogie. Uh, new Mountain Dew slogan, boogie did nothing wrong. Mm, I, don't, I don't think they'd say that. I don't think that's something they'd run. I think they'd probably do the opposite. Don't trust this man. This is not what Mountain Dew does to you. <laughs> He's lying. We're a fun drink for fun people. Uh, I'm convinced PepsiCo sent a cease and desist to Boogie after this. Yeah, see? It's probably the more <laughs> likely. I think he meant to say corpulent. I, I'm not sure what part of the video, but maybe. Boogie, Corporal Christ's New Age Rebirth. I mean, he took a lot of mushrooms, you know? Can you deny that that would have given him a brand new perspective on life? A new lease, so to speak? That I don't think we've seen the repercussions of it all past the videos he made on it. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Mushroom, mushroom. You can't break the cycle until you break yourself. You have to break yourself down and build up from the pieces. It's incredibly hard and the work never ends, but the results are so worth it. Take care of yourself and go to the gym. If you meant that for Boogie, uh, he would probably be like, you're so right, and I have. I have been broken. <laughs> I have been through so much. And, he's like, mm -hmm. and I'm so sorry that I let you all down. That's the big regret, is letting you guys down. Yeah. So, so sorry. Uh, why is Rich shirtless? That would be Review Tech USA at that point, I think. Uh, uh, I don't know, that's yeah, just something he does. Yeah, that's the thing that he does. It's a uh, it, it it branding, I guess. Um, let my man be shirtless. Come on, I don't know. I'm fine with him not being shirtless. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess if you want to make it optional, fine. But it, well, there was no option for us. I guess I could have put a graphic up. <laughs> like I'm generally a... against this sort of thing, but maybe Boogie should <coughs> burka. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, Rag should write a comedic story. Doggo has genuine comedic skill and can come up with good quips off the top of his head. Much respect to Rags. Oh, oh, oh. Ever thought of doing stand-up Rags? Um, I, I think we've all thought of doing stand-up, but no, I think I, everybody has. I've never, uh, I've never really given it much, uh, too much consideration. Maybe EFAP is is my outlet for that kind of thing. I'm, I'm good at parties. Uh, people like me when I'm right. I, no, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and wank myself off, but uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, oh. I'll, I'll keep them, I'll keep them rolling as best I can. Well, this is it. Tomorrow I ship for Air Force basic training. I'll miss seven phenomenal faps, unfortunately. See you all January 11th. See y'all later. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, hey, yeah. welcome back. Hey, bud. I hope you had fun. <laughs> As you can Air tell, Force. we're right on time with uh, getting these to respond the to. I, I'm guessing. Not every, obviously, not everyone flies the plane. So he might have been a mechanic. You know, engineers, mechanics. Yeah. yeah, he might have been like logistics people. He could have been, you know, in charge of 
you know, making sure the cargo gets where it needs to go. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of people who work to, you know. He was doing, well, he said basic training as well, so um, who knows what will be next for him. basic training? Well, I guess a lot of basic training is going to be the same. It's probably mostly standardized basic training, fitness and mental evaluations and familiar, uh, familiarization with the command structures and protocols and things of that nature. Of course. I yeah, feel so fun. bad for that young girl you tragic Boogie stuff. In boot camp? No, but it would be funny. It would be funny. <laughs> you get, like the uh, first well, challenge would be would be over. Uh, they said I feel so bad for that young girl tragic stuff. Most people do. As you saw ER was like dying watching yeah. that part. I think it was um it was Moriarty, right, who was uh getting really upset that he was essentially using this chick as a like a way for him to indulge in his own embarrassment, uh, and she's being used as essentially a scapegoat by proxy. Well, when you find out the history, it's like she's got severe mental issues of her own. She hasn't figured herself out at all. Just, you can't no, help it. No one has at that age. No one at that age is a normal person hasn't figured themselves out at that age. The idea that this is a person who sees themselves being with Boogie and loving him and getting married to him, like she's clearly mentally unwell. Hence the poor girl comments. This man is on fire, Boogie's Inferno. I mean, yeah, it could make for a good uh, book, Boogie's Inferno. Or good game, maybe. <laughs> Boogie's Inferno. <laughs> that would just, it would just be about flaming hot Cheetos, is all it would be. Yeah. That's uh, Boogie's that's, Inferno. It's <laughs> <that's> good enough. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, Nick the Oreo is on. Does he still think Az hates black people because he thinks a Spider Man character should rebrand? I have Damn, no Nick, idea. That's, a, that's an L take. Could have had a back and forth about that at the time, but I, I have no... This is the thing. You, you know, you invite people on, you don't know if, if, if there's potential beef or no beef at all. Who knows if he even said all that? I have no idea, but... Um, no, who knows? Yeah, the Miles Morales discourse is always is just super spicy for everybody on the internet, so... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no idea on that one. Oh wow, I got home right as the stream was ending. That's a certified crispy critter if I say so. Wonder what Tism awaits me. Hopefully not much cringe. Oh no. Not nah. cringe? Honey <laughs> fap? No, no, we don't. No. We, are new. we are no cringe mongers. No. 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 Um, we are refined and uh, um uh what what would a word be for something that's uh I don't know, like official and high class. And you know, we possessing great decorum, whatever those words are. We're all of that, yeah. Us. That's yeah. Us. We're all of that. We're not. We're not. Cr we we are peak fire. We are yeah, not peak fire, bro. Yeah, peak fire. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. I think I said this on a different stream, so, so not to you guys. But I watched the Squid Game in Real Life TV show. Have you heard about this? Not the Mr. Beast one. Yep. The like Netflix uh, yeah, one. Yeah, I've heard about the TV show. Yeah. Um. There's some stuff in it that's like kind of fun to watch and is pretty good, but a lot of it is super cringy, as you can imagine. Uh, the TV show is miles better because they have to try and force storylines instead of they're just you know being a writer. So instead like, of just following people around with cameras. And oh, they did that. People develop, and they tried oh. to cr like f you know show enough of a particular thing to try and generate like a. Say, like, a guy was like, fucking, I don't like that guy over there. And then, you know, they go, Doom, with music. And, like, oh, and they'd be like, oh, God, those are on separate teams. Oh, oh this is like crazy. American oh, my God. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. And you're just like, this is crap. <laughs> but something that was driving me and Mel nuts when watching it was that um, every time any kind of victory was gotten by any individual or group of people, all of them would fucking say, let's go, every time. I think the phrase, let's go, yeah, was said like 200 times in the in the span of us watching it um it, it was absolutely annihilating those fucking words for us because i find it meme and funny but when you actually hear people genuinely saying it over and 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 over you're just like whoa we need to move on i miss wow or yay remember those wow or yay yeah just saying whoa yeah or woo yeah yeah, well, no. see, I did it there, and I wasn't even thinking about it. But it feels see, like yeah. those have all been replaced by "Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go." Um, it's fine, you know. No, it's not. <laughs> I like saying "Let's go" is fine. It's not. It's not okay. 
It's fine. Not fire. Yes, it is. It's it's not peak fire, but it's it's modestly. Watch that show you know, and then tell me if you feel the same because you won't. Listen, you wouldn't just because some. I'm sure that Boogie in his life has said "wow" and "yeah" many times, but that doesn't ruin that. Don't let that ruin it for the rest of us. It could if he said he it enough times. Mountain Dew for the rest of us. Also, it wasn't Boogie that did He's this. Working. It was many people. Yeah, but Boogie can vote many times, so it's basically the same thing. I think, thing. like, three times. I don't think our system didn't account for... Three is, like, a crowd. A crowd of people. A crowd and of Boogie votes is impressive for one person. People. I'm not going to deny that. Anyway, <laughs> that's the last Super Chat, so... Uh, that was a, it was a bit of a long one, but you know what? I, I feel like we got, got the answer sorted, and that's great, so... You know, enjoy that, all of you at home. Thank you very much for your kind donations and messages. Hopefully you got the answers you were looking for. Be it about... I mean, we, we talked about so many things. I don't remember what we talked about in total anymore. There was some animal talk in there. Car talk. Boogie talk. Lots of boogie talk. It makes sense because it's a boogie episode, you know. Thematically on point. But, I mean, other than that, you know, you, you, you try now go out there and have yourself a good day with whatever you're, you're up to. From us, though. Indeed. We're going to say yeah, goodbye everyone. now. Thanks very much. We appreciate that. Bye. Well, see ya. See Goodbye, later. everyone. Toodaloo. Bye. Let's go. No. Let's leave. Let's go. Let's. No, no. I mean, like, let's no, progress. Stop. Let's no. let's let's move ourselves in no. a forward direction away no. to the to the thing that we're gonna do next. No. Now that we've you know done this, let's go. No. Let's go.